And he's like, the podcast on Haunted Hill will contain spoilers and swearing. I am the devil, and I am here to do the devil's work. I saw this fight come. Be one of us. I didn't tell you my name. Hang up. I didn't tell them my name. Hello and welcome to the podcast on Haunted Hill episode 94. This episode, Dan and I are getting probed. Uh, my name is Gav, I'm your host, and Daniel is the other host, aren't you, Daniel? Um, uh, yes, Brobin's all the, all the rage this episode. Um, there's E.T.'s little shiny finger going everywhere, any orifice we can think of. This episode, ladies and gentlemen, is about aliens and spooky things or in the sky, things which shouldn't be there. They're unidentified, they're flying, they're objects. Dan, what do you think? I think that... Uh, we are going to be talking about a whole range of incredible things, mainly centering around alien abduction or alien visits. Mm. Um, we haven't really done a proper full-on UFO slash alien abduction episode, really. We've covered a ton of alien movies, from The Thing to Alien and a bunch of other stuff, even Critters and stuff like that. But uh, this is going to be a, a fun episode. We can really get into some X-Files territory here. Hopefully the government don't block this episode, because we may reveal some secrets. They might start scrambling you. If you start losing connection, I'm not going to say it's like my shitty Wi-Fi. I'm going to be like, that's the government, guys. That's the FBI. So if that happens, um, it's the government. So, in line with the, that topic, we are going to be covering two movies, probably two of the, in my opinion, two of the better movies um, around alien abductions and stuff like that. You may, your listeners may disagree, but certainly um, Fire in the Sky from 1993 is an often talked about um, movie, and obviously it's based on a, air quotations, true story. Um as well, which we'll get into, and we'll even look into the the true the story behind it as well. So that's one of the movies we're going to be covering from '93 with the Terminator himself, Robert Patrick, is in that. Not I Arnie. I didn't realise he was in it. And uh, yeah. he's, he's quite young and uh, smooth faced, isn't he? Even though he's got a bit, of, also, bit of a funny beard, but he's very smooth faced. Also, Henry Thomas is in it, who was friends e. with E.T. E. So back to Aliens again. Oh, look at that! E. I didn't really as oh. when watch oh, well watching it. I didn't actually <laughs> realise that uh, he was in. Well, I knew. Uh, no, I did realise in E.T., but I didn't take into account that he's actually in another Alien movie. I'm watching. That's funny, isn't it? There we go. And the other movie we're going to be covering is uh, 2009's The Fourth Kind. Not the third, not Close Encounters of the Third, not the second, not the first, The Fourth Kind. See, that's a Weinstein movie. Ah, uh, Wankstein. Um, starring uh, the lovely Milia Jakovic, or Mila Jovovich, or Mila Jovovich. Playing uh, herself. I don't really know playing herself in the movie oh, which I is can't just, wait to talk about that yeah this is going to be an interesting conversation and I'm going to, I'm going to diss it a little bit to be honest with you um, you son of a bitch I know um, have you been up to anything exciting have you been looking up at and looking for any aliens I've actually because I've been I've been balls deep me and Sarah have both been balls deep Sarah doesn't even have balls but we've both been <laughs> balls deep in aliens um, can you not say the phrase balls deep while I'm swigging beer because okay. I just spilt some Sorry. Thank you. Carry on. And, uh, we, we've been watching a lot of stuff, and uh, we've even occasionally just looked up at the sky and been like, "Is that a light?" And I've stared at the sky for a little while, trying to see if I could just quickly catch an alien, just because, just because the coincidence. I happen to look up for uh, thirty-five seconds, an alien's going to go by. I thought I saw, I saw one once, but one, once by a time. Um, pretty sure it's just the weed, but you know, <laughs> that was a long time just ago in a crack. park. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I saw something just before lockdown. I was waiting for Alice uh, outside of my office to come and pick me up. And I said, look at that in the sky. And everyone was staring up at this really weird, bright light in the sky. I got home and I Googled it. It turns out, I think, if I remember right, it was Jupiter. Um, it was There was something weird that night and everyone could clearly see Jupiter. And I thought, how insane is it that we can see Jupiter from Earth? That's so amazing. Um, were you disappointed, we though? It wasn't an alien. 
Oh, it was because I wanted a real good probe in that night. But luckily, Alice picked me up and we went home. Is so. is is if we've got any drinkers here who like to listen to our show while drinking? I don't know why that's a thing. If it was a thing, and it, it is a thing, and you're out there drinking, have a shot each time Dan or I say the word probe. Probing. 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 Um, have Probing. you watched anything? Um, the only movie that I kind of because I've been busy, you know what it's like. Have uh, the only movie I really wanted to talk about is is a movie that is three years old now, but I watched it on um, the Horror Channel recently, and it's really good. And it's called Radius, and I just wanted to recommend this film. Apparently, it did well at Fright Fest um, when it came out in 2017. It's a Canadian horror movie. It's a little bit low budget, but it's about a guy that wakes up from a car crash and. Anyone who comes within sort of a hundred feet of him just drops dead instantly, and he's trying to figure out what's going on. It's got a bit of a X Files vibe to it. It's got a bit of an Is X-Men. It a disappoint- that sounds like a really great concept because uh, you're trying to figure it out along with him. Uh, is it really a disappointing ending? Absolutely not. It's oh, really, good. really good. I really enjoyed it. Another character comes into it as well. I won't spoil it any further, but there's another character that he has to team up with who's got something happening happening to her and overall just a real fun interesting movie and i do love a good sci-fi mystery it was a real i don't know something about it it's almost a bit twin peaks at times because it all takes place in this tiny little town out in the middle of nowhere as well so it's real fun that's radius from 2017 guys i would really wanted to recommend that one good fun about you what have you seen because you good boy you you've actually got a little list here, haven't you well sarah had a go at me because she's <laughs> she she didn't have a go at me she just said look just just like write down what you're watching so you actually can remember to tell Dan this time I was like, okay cool so I've got a little list ladies well, and gentlemen uh, I watched Independence one more time. Independence Day 2 Resurgence have you seen that? I've seen it Gav and quite frankly <laughs> it's an absolute flaming piece of shit <laughs> um, uh, it was a movie there you go. I also it's went to the fat, cinema. Fat data in it. Huh? It's got fat data, isn't it? Fat data? Yeah, data from Star Trek Next Generation is in it again, but he's really fat all of a sudden in it. Oh, I don't know. Brett Spiner. It's just a fucking terrible movie. And I bet Will Smith looked at that and thought, thank fuck I wasn't in that. Um, yeah. Mm. Jeff got Jeff Goldblum's in it for the majority of the film, which was really strange and I thought it was gonna Sarah even said if he dies I will eat my hat and I said what sort of hat have you got she explained the hat to me and I said that's gonna be quite a thing you're gonna have to eat but he didn't die so she didn't eat the hat what about um the president um Bill Pullman he's in it with a great big bushy beard with a great big bushy beard um yeah he is um anyway Sarah. I went to cinema I went to the cinema your what showcase is showcase is, is open Dan your showcase will be open and we watched Aliens in the cinema for a fiver. Aliens! Uh, uh, was it, it the uncut version or the edited version? No, it'd just be the, the original theatrical. Um, but um, I watched Aliens in the cinema. We were actually late getting into it because we, we, we were like, oh, they play traders and things. And then actually, obviously, no, I guess they don't play traders because I don't know what movies are coming out. But anyway, um, uh, that was really good. I'm not seeing yeah, that. Just, and that, that movie I, is... Go on. I was going to say, can I tangent off of that real quick for our UK listeners? Um, so Showcase Cinema in the UK are doing this weird and amazing thing because cinemas aren't really properly op- open yet and no movie, every movie in the world has been delayed. But the Showcase Cinema in the UK is showing a whole bunch of classics, be it Labyrinth, Aliens, Terminator 2, Pulp Fiction. There's a whole ton of stuff that they're showing, even some stuff like the newer stuff. There's The Matrix. So if anybody really wants to go and check out a movie they, they probably never thought they'd get to see on the big screen, now's a good time. Check what's going on at the Showcase if you've got one in your area 100 percent worth it i mean watching aliens on the big screen must have been absolutely phenomenal well this is this is a testament to why we need cinemas um i didn't actually realize till watching it and then coming out it was like watching it for the first time and i've seen that movie uh-huh. fuck tons of times the reason was you're just like there's like oh i didn't kind of notice that character and then and then this and that and then there's like, oh okay and then you actually kind of i don't know why you're really really submerged you know, that's the best way to do it. Really plunge straight into that film and all the action, and the movie just keeps moving and moving. And it was like watching it for the first time, just because the whole 
the whole you got the whole feeling of what it is in the cinema and maybe it, just was because it's my first time back at cinema but that's how i felt man but it's a real um loud and non-stop once it kicks off it really doesn't it's relentless isn't oh, it really and, it just keeps and going and going all, and going so, and i kept yeah. thinking oh this must be the uh the, this is the ending and i was like no 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 because bishops could get cut in half and but like so then so then you get on to the next and for whatever reason it felt like i was watching it fresh it was weird as fuck really was oh nice one i'm glad you enjoyed that um i also watched for this episode i've been doing it like i said uh, i watched x files season two episode five six and eight that's where scully gets abducted by aliens does she get probed uh i didn't show that are you can i hear a ufo landing outside your house right helicopters now? man this is it see we're back it's like life's going slightly back to normal for people so the air traffic's got ridiculous again it's fucking just all of a sudden the sounds of fucking air, airplanes and helicopters like fuck's like air, ufos popping by it's like fuck off you ufo get to the chopper get to the um, chopper um, what else have you been watching well do you know of a guy, a guy called bob lazar that name Rings a tiny, tiny little bell for me. He worked um, in Roswell, um, mm-hmm. Area 51. Um, he worked there. Then years ago, he got out of it. He got out of it, and then like in the 80s, whatever. He said that he he would be there reverse engineering spaceships, um, and he was saying stuff which was like, "Oh my god!" Then later on, years down the line, this material that he's speaking of came like it was like, "Oh, this is now an actual thing." But he knew about it before. So how did he know about it? And it seemed really like like uh like his truth like authentic you know and he was on the um joe rogan podcast and joe rogan probed him quite a bit actually asked him quite a few questions and stuff and he comes across really you know um but i've been watching the thing sarah's been watching as well this is really interesting it's called the behavior experts on on youtube this is because of lockdown you've got four of the world's leading body language specialists have, have been breaking down different things. They've done uh, the McCann family. They've done like um, Prince Andrew, and with that whole pedo thing going on. Mm. And they did this dude, Bob Lazar, going through all of his facial things and going through everything he's saying. It's so funny. But they basically put down to no, he's talking a load of shit. And I was like, no, you've broken it for me. <laughs> the illusion. What was but, the material that he invented or claimed well, to I can't remember what reverse engineer? I can't remember. But no, he's reverse engineering spaceships. That's what he's doing. He had different ones. Um, and he was. He sounds so like legit. He's, but he said that story a million times. He's almost like an actor. Which is so disappointing because when we get on to talking about aliens today, I want to like, like normally I am Scully, aren't I? Out of us two, but mm. for this, I want to believe like Mulder. I I the, believe there has to be something out there. Thing is, what you the other thing to think about is <clears throat> a lot of these documentaries and that are put out there potentially, and this is the conspiracy theorist in me to put us off the, the scent. Do you know what I mean? Uh, so there mm. is a chance that a lot of these documentaries are out there to put us off and ah oh, no nah, it's all nonsense nah, it's rubbish but maybe actually it isn't and they just want us to think move on to the next thing nothing to see here possibly um mm-hmm. i also watched dark skies which is a really good movie and i wish we'd cover that instead of um that that fourth kind fourth coin Dark Skies, I didn't really like it very much. It's a bit like Paranormal Activity, but with aliens. I thought it was, I watched it again the other night after watching these two movies. Oh, I don't know why, but I thought it was really good. It reminded me of Poltergeist. It had such a Poltergeist feel to it. It's Yeah, it's got a good I, vibe. Go watch that movie again and think of Poltergeist and Paranormal Activity. And you're like, yeah, that's that movie. I really enjoyed it, actually. Well, you never know. We may get abducted again at some point in the future and do, do another abduction. I did do a black- because. One movie I really wish I'd watched in prep for this episode is uh, Close Encounters of the Third Kind. I know. I thought of that earlier, and I was like, "Shit!" So we could always come back and do Dark Skies and Close Encounters. You never know. We could do that for the summer next year. We could do that. Um, I also um, that's all my alien stuff. I did go on a Black Lives March, uh, Black Lives Matter March, uh, uh, a couple of weeks ago, just after our our last episode, and. um, in Farnham, not many people, very little indeed. Um, and I had one old guy, he was a passenger of the car, come around the corner and just go, Bollocks! <laughs> Brilliant! And then another oh, guy walk by and say, Get a life, guys! Oh, God. This is like, Ugh. 
Get us a life. That's lovely, isn't it? I know, because I actually broke down what you're saying, like, get a life, not bringing into all that, and I was like, okay, I'm not going to get into it now. This isn't a fucking therapy session podcast. This is about horror movies. Um, Also, last night, I watched a very funny movie, which is not horror at all. It's called Booksmart. It's about two teenage girls who are nerds and decide uh, when they last day of university um, uh, school on graduation that they're going to go to a party because everybody who's partied is actually going to uni like them, and they've missed out, so they go there. And it's fucking hilarious. But I watched it with... Jay, my non-binary child. Um, sibling. Oh, no, not sibling. Child. Yeah. Um, and it has a non-binary type a lady in it who also likes ladies. Like one of the girls, she's like 16, 17. Uh, it was awkward at times. Um, there was t- discussion about masturbating with a teddy bear where... Oh. Luckily, Jay was looking at her iPad at the time and missed some of that. That was good. But then later on at a party, one of the girls pulls another girl in the bathroom. Then they start stripping off and then, they, and then she's going to lose her virginity with this girl and have sex in the bathroom. And, and you're watching that with your And I, I slowly put my knee up so I couldn't see Jay in the room. And I said, you are not in this room. I am not in this room. We are not here. You are not here. Do not speak to me. And then we just watched it. It was Incredible. quite cringy. Yeah, but it's a very, very funny film, but it's not horror or <coughs> aliens. But wow, it was you, almost some probing. Sorry. You actually had some movies to watch. That's brilliant. Dude, I watch movies all the time. I just forget to fucking tell you what they are. We, I feel jealous now that uh, I only had the one. So I do have two more movies to quickly mention that I've watched. Um, one of them is an older one. One of them is a newer one. The older one is Disturbia. Uh, oh, yeah, which yeah, yeah. I watched I that recently. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it holds up. In fact, it's, I preferred it the second or third time around. It's all, it's all right. It's all right. I've even noticed there's a lot of Fright Night um, vibes Fright to Night it. Fright Night Ruin, well. though. Yeah. Well, that's what... The what, Burbs. Fright Night is very much that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that was good fun. And, and actually, that's gone up a little bit in my my rankings um and the other movie i watched is a sequel and i got told off by our legion network boss but Bo, because he said he told me big boss Bo. He said you watch too many shark movies we need to have a talk oh, because i, I do and I, that means <laughs> and it's I got watched, bad i know i know he said me and you and there was no like smiley face it was i was just straight up in trouble so <laughs> i got detention I got detention with Bo at some Big point. Big bad uh, Bo. <laughs> so I watched 47 Meters Down Uncaged, which is the sequel. It's Nick 40, Cage in it. Please meters. tell me Nick Cage is in it. Oh, my God. Nick Can Cage you Uncaged. He plays the shark. He plays a shark. <gasps> oh, hi. I'm going to bite you now. Oh, yeah. oh, swim. Now, this is a movie about a bunch of girls who go caved. So this is like The Descent basically they go cave diving uh, scuba cave diving and they find that there's these random weird white sharks who are blind um, I've seen it. and they start attacking them and i really fucking enjoyed it i didn't expect it i was like hang on a minute because i was kind of paying attention and about 15 minutes into it i thought this seems pretty good so i stopped what i was doing and i rewound it a little bit and then i really paid full attention and the ending was great as well the ending really threw me off to be honest dan uh the amount of shit you, you've been watching recently i'm sure most things probably look better no that's no offense no it's no offense to your 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 sharknado films they're probably Are you referring not shit. to the film that i watched the other day called ibiza undead uh, I didn't know you watched the this movie. I just kind of know, to be honest. I know you pretty well now. So it's uh, got super hands from um, uh, Peep Show, uh, Peep Show in it, and it's a bit. He's like a club owner in Ibiza, and it's like it's like a follow up to Shaun of the Dead almost because zombies are a thing. Is it any good? And everybody knows about them. No. What What would you give it? Three out of ten. What's IMDb? I give, I give really? it one out of ten. Why did you do it gets this about two point eight? Out of all, it was out on of the all horror the, channel, get. but out of all the cinema out there in the world, and you pretty much have access nowadays to anything, almost. You know, like like you could watch. I hate apocalypse. I now. hate myself. Like, I hate myself. There's got to be some. There's got to be something which you're using this as therapy <laughs> or something. There's something going on here, man. I think we need to get a therapist on this to just talk with us. Actually, let's not get a therapist on it. I don't want a therapist to go into my mind. They're well, going to have a field day. Well, talking of fields and field days. Uh, I'd like you to tell us about something you did in a field recently. Don't worry, listeners, this isn't anything too dodgy. And I was with Sarah, but um, we went... Uh... So, Gav, Gav, hang on, before you start telling this story, yeah. you messaged me saying, I'm going random astronauting <laughs> later. And I thought, 
And I thought, I don't even, I was working and I thought, <laughs> I don't even know what the fuck he's on about there. I'm going to leave that for now and I'll message him later. And then uh, what it was actually, what was it actually called, Gav? Rando Norton. <laughs> Rando noting, not random astronauting, everybody. I put random astronauting. I even put it on Facebook and said I was doing that. Well, that'd be like, that'd be basically if you just get a coordinates to go somewhere in space. That's what that would be. I wasn't doing that. NASA, just get a phone call from NASA. Go oh, here. Hey, can you pop off to um, the outer region of uh, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah sure. No, uh, Rando Norton, um, we, we found this um, someone, uh, the other podcast I'm doing, the High Strangers podcast. Uh, quick plug, episode 5 we just released Sarah talks about dying, there you go check that out, anyway um, we we had a, a thing say, saying check out Rando Norton and basically it's an app and it goes to some Australian university and it goes by your intentions so if you say something if you said stay puffed the marshmallow man stay puffed marshmallow man will appear like ghostbusters well it won't appear it will send you to a place which is like that which is supposed to be something like that it's weird i think that's too specific it's kind of like well the way i described it to you guys was it sounds like pokemon go yeah 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 but but in real life but but like weird stuff and the weird situation is what did those kids find when they did it yeah some kids in america found and they found a suitcase uh, these coordinates took them to this place and there's a suitcase there and a suitcase has human remains in it um which obviously freaked them out and had to get the police involved and that's like the most famous type but you there's quite a lot on the youtube there's a lot of these people going to do it checking it out and weird shit going on and stuff it's a weird thing but sarah and i did it and we filmed it actually you can actually see the video of it on the deadbolt films youtube channel um and it sounds fun and it's the kind of thing that when you're kind of we're all in lockdown and we haven't really got a lot going on yeah 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 now that we can go out a little bit um you know just plug that in and just go on a little adventure that somebody else tells you to go on you never know what you'll find no it's a gorgeous day and where sarah lives it's the midlands of england um it's very flat with a lot of fields and um it was really sunny so we just went out and we were out for like a three almost four hours doing it and it didn't feel like that and afterwards we could have kept just kept going and going and going and going um but i was filming it and i I, I didn't want to keep doing it um it's really fun it's it's kind of a cool thing obviously if you find a dead body that's not as much fun well that's what i was hoping depending on who you are but yeah um no we didn't find dead body but that's what we did rando norton check it out you can download the app rando nautica i think is uh the app very very interesting and the same but cool Pokemon Go with real life dead bodies everyone yeah and you can check out the video if you want to watch it on YouTube slash deadbolt films it's top, the top video just put it out yes before we talk about some alien shit there's one last thing to mention in this little intro and that is that we are very proud of Thomas Campbell Tom Campbell we are be- because deadbolt films will soon be publishing a, a little a folk horror comic, won't it, Gav? He's 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 been funding away for it, um, going through Deadbolt Films, and it's a folk horror comic. There's some great Wait. artists on, uh, great artists on there, and there's another guy doing letterings. It's, so it's the three of them doing it. Um, and Tom's written a story. The artwork called, looks amazing. I don't know. Folk, it's called, is folk horror a thing in comic comics? I don't know. I don't see why not. It's called Abyssal Albion. Uh, I couldn't pronounce it on the last episode. And yeah, well, I think when we talked about it last time, we were like, it, Kickstarter's just started, but he's already about almost halfway. At least absolutely smashed his target. Yeah. So anyone who's back that is, can look forward to, you know, getting whatever it is that Get, you're getting, getting depending on how much you've yeah. backed it with. And, you know, we're all very excited and happy and very proud and that's the first comic really related to Deadbolt so we're all really super happy and proud of that and it's awesome so well done Tom yeah totally well Deadbolt um, films and thank now thank you to everybody Deadbolt we've got a comic we've got a couple of podcasts we've got a load of short films we've got feature films it's go on the website deadboltfilms.com and it links to everything it's pretty cool we're the fucking leaders of the new world here <laughs> that's it that's it <laughs> that's exactly it right well there we go <laughs> What do you want to do? Do you want to have a, a little breather and then come back and get into some alien shit before we head into our reviews? <laughs> just step in some alien shit. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, um, just well, step to bloody alien shit right here. Bloody hell. Oh, yeah, we'll have a good trailer. And I then um, uh, will come back with you and we will just... I'm just going to do like a, a couple of like 
mentions of the most famous sightings, a couple of like, you know, I'll give a little bit of info, but I'm not some fucking UFO expert. But um, yeah, I mean, and as you guys can probably guess, our world of the strange segment later on in this episode is going to be quite heavily based on alien shit so yeah. there's going to be a lot of alien talk in this episode do um, alien shit that's the thing you keep mentioning alien shit do they shit do they have bottoms maybe that's why they're so interested in humans bottoms because they don't have them maybe that's probably I why they probe them and why does, where's that whole probing thing come from can i give you i don't know but can i tell you one quick thing that i learned today um before we take a break and come back and talk about aliens is that all right yeah the anus, the human anus, mm-hmm. is the first part of the baby to be formed in the womb. That's the first thing that's formed properly in the womb, the mm-hmm. anus. That almost makes See? sense because the food's got to come out. So they so go we, for that. We make literally that first. start off as a fucking asshole. Everybody starts off as an asshole, is what I'm saying here. That's, and it's that's... Up to you to change that. Oh, that's it. I'm glad you brought that around because I was like, that's not a good thing to say. Everyone's just born an arsehole. Like, that's not, you know, isn't, that, isn't that an odd the first thing, thing that, uh, we all start off as a, a, an anus? It's brilliant trivia. Thank you. <laughs> I always like to keep things anal. All right, well, let's, let's have a little break and come back and talk about some anal probing. Why is probing so funny? All right, anyway, bye. Hey, Andrew. Hey, Maddie. Do you like horror movies? I sure do. Well, did you know that most horror movies are inspired by real-life horror? Really? Like what? Well, take The Shining, for instance. That's based on Stephen King's real-life addictions, or The Purge, which could be our country any minute now. Oh, and The Strangers, which is based on a real-life murder. People should be talking about these things. Hey, Guys. Oh, oh, hey, Producer, producer Michael. Producer Michael, oh, Well, I hate to break it to you, but somebody already is. It's you. <gasps> That's right. We are Friday the 13th, the podcast where we talk about horror in real life and horror in media, all from an LGBTQ perspective. Because we gay, y'all. We are proud members of the Legion Podcast Network, and we can be found on iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, or wherever your favorite podcasts are found. And follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Come along with us on this crazy journey, and as always, get slayed. And we're back, ladies and gentlemen, and non-binary people who are still ladies and gentlemen, I guess. No? no. They're not. No. Okay. So I was they, they, the first whatever time. they say they want to be. Exactly. Whatever's, whatever's clever. Um, yeah, I'm back. I'm, I'm prepped now. I had a glass of water for the intro, because now I don't drink, so I have to mix it up. So I've got uh, cranberry and raspberry juice now for this. Then later on, I'm getting buck wild with non-alcoholic ginger beer. You are off the fucking, fucking chain. chain. Boom! Um, I've got a bottle... Well, I don't know why we're listening this to our listeners, but I've got a bottle of red wine, <laughs> I've got three bottles of Brew Dog Punk IPA, and, as I showed you, I'm very proud that I've got a giant bottle of our sponsor, Cherry Pepsi Max. Are you drinking all that shit tonight? You can't drink all that stuff Not all tonight. Not all of it tonight, no. I've got insane. work here. I've got to get up at 5.30 for work. Come on. Goddamn insane. Um, aliens. Alien shit. UFOs. I... I think we have to be. I almost went into a uh, Captain Cook and I. I think we have to be alone. Uh, no, no, we can't be alone. Uh, we have to. There has to be something out there. Has to be. What do you think? Hundred percent. There has to be. Like, look at look. Right, so I've got this list of like, um, like sightings. Um, I'm not going through it all. Be fucking here forever. And this is what makes me go like, come on. There has to be some shit out there because there's no way we can have this many sightings without like a lot, a lot of these sightings these people after having them are just people diss them take the piss out of them and all that sort of stuff do you know what i mean they can't leave normal lives anymore but it's just happened before um it's no one yeah you can do it i guess it's like saying michael jackson oh yeah that's 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 accuse michael jackson of something so we get a payoff it's not like that. You can't... Well, yeah, you can get, like, a newspaper to report on you or a movie could take the rights of your story, etc., etc. But there's so many science that... I don't know. Like, going from... Yeah. Like, go on, sorry. I'm going off on one already. Go on. Uh, no, no, it's fine. I, I, and I, it's something we're both we're both very passionate about. I think um, the other thing I would throw in there is it's not just a case of the amount of sightings. It's the length of time in human history that... Yes. And this is the bit that really excites me, and I know the same for you, because we even touched touched on it in a script that we wrote once. Um, and we've seen it in movies, you know, before, where 
ancient civilizations have carvings and paintings on their walls of these wheels in the sky or rockets or spacemen or uh, people for you know and whether that's god or their god or their interpretation of it it you know i i can't help but think the concept of god um, and therefore religion comes from ancient civilizations being created with the help of i sound like an absolute but i don't care but you know what i mean and i know the thing is like you just said people say it out loud and then other people go oh you're talking absolute bollocks mate but i think well actually fuck you because i really strongly believe even more so probably than the supernatural ghosts things like that i strongly believe that in this universe, A, we're not alone, and B, you've got to be fucking stupid and very big-headed to think that we're the only planet in this probably infinite cosmos that we live in that has life on it, because yeah, the, no, we ain't. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And then there's the whole bigger side of life as well, where we are nothing, and this is all just like, we're just literally next to nothing in the size of the galaxy. You know, and it's a hard thing for us to uh, believe. And you got to remember also, it's hard for other people to believe, especially when you're highly religious and something like that goes against the principles of God, your God. Do you, you know what I mean? Yeah, it really, it really, it, it's cutting into going. That's not, that's not correct. That's not right. I, and I'm very hard for people to believe. And this is why, you know, people would say that this is a reason why it's been kept from from the public for so many years, because it would just literally destroy civilization in so many ways, especially religious ways. It would just fucking it'd destroy people's minds. There'd be mass suicides. There'd be all sorts. You know. Well, we could even touch on, uh, and you brought this up in the intro, you know, with reverse engineering. There is that whole theory that the government, even, not even related to aliens, completely separately, but the government always keeps us five to ten years behind the, the advancements that they've made in technology and medicines, etc. What, what, because what particular government? Would, uh, all governments, okay. because it would blow it would blow our mind, you know. They're releasing 3G, 4G, 5G. It's blowing our mind whenever something new comes out. And and I've said this, we've said this in podcasts, in episodes before, where if you went back to 10-year-old Dan and Gav with an iPhone and said, look at this little tiny thing here. This is a computer, a TV, a music yeah, player. Yeah, it blow our minds, wouldn't it? It's got all the knowledge in the world within it. That would blow our minds. Whereas we've gradually been eased into all of that over 40 years. You know, uh, do the government know about it? But yeah, they do. Are they going to tell us about it well, gradually over time? Well, yeah, like this year in lockdown, when so much shit's going down all of a sudden, like you all of a sudden have one day of the McCann case and someone's been done for that. Like, what? Where did that come from? Is that just a diversion that tactic? Trying, yes, that was trying to take Which people's is, minds off of... Yeah, it's disgusting, but that's not something we're getting into. But then then all of a sudden they popped up the, the, uh, the American Air Force released some uh, footage. And they said, yeah, these are objects that fly that we cannot identify. They're identified flying objects. <laughs> I, I like that. your rap there. I know, These man. are objects that fly that we, we cannot, cannot identify. identify. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, listeners. I'm so sorry. We're only about 25 minutes into this episode and we've rapped already. But... They released that shit this year, and it was just like, yeah, there's like, yeah, we we can do it. And basically, you had these 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 objects that would be stationary, hovering, and they were out for like, I think it was like twelve to seventeen hours at a time, and that's not possible because obviously fueling. Um, and if you could say we argue, and it's solar powered, it's you know, the other thing was though that they were stationary and they managed to like some of the jets managed to lock into them. Oh, wicked, wicked! And they got a video on them and because they, the, the, they're like, get up there, this is not right, get up there and follow them. And they sent their fastest jets, and their fastest jets tried to keep up with these objects. And you got to remember these objects were from stationary. Then went and they went to Mark Twelve, I think it was, I think which is Hank Seven, one thousand seven hundred miles per hour. Mm. So, sure. what object can hover and, 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 and still do and that. stationary in the sky and, do that. and then move from and that the to seventeen hundred miles jets, an hour? The jets got up to almost Mark Mark, mark Two. That's as far, as fast as they can go. And then they can, you know, they went gone. That's and weird it's, as fuck. Come on, what is that? And the, they, the, yeah. the other argument is people will go, well, it's Korea, they've developed this, or well, well no, Russians no, have developed that. No one but, has developed this technology, exactly. it's not possible. 
You're silly if you think that as well, it's, I think. It, you know, so so looking at this report of the times, you know, first thing, phantom ships had been seen gleaming in the sky. 218 BC. Holy shit, that, that what, before coronavirus? Before coronavirus. <laughs> Sorry. Carry 218 on. <laughs> BC. And, you know, that that was the first thing. Um there's you get paintings you get paintings with these little ufos in there and there's ezekiel's will do you remember that old thing yep oh yeah he saw ezekiel looked up and uh he saw a fire in the sky a fiery wheel in the sky yeah and it was a chariot and it carried upon it i'm trying to remember it now but it carried upon it um visitors something 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 that's in the fucking bible whether the bible is a bunch of bollocks or not that's in the bible yeah and it, there's like there's no point in me going through this list. It's you know uh, bombers in World War Two saw metallic spheres and coloured balls of light repeatedly spotted and occasionally photographed. Um, and the thing is though, this this is all over the world. This is worldwide. Science worldwide. It's not just one particular place. You do get particular places which do have that whole almost thing where they'll come to it as a place in America. I should know which it is. Uh, New is Mexico. It, it is. It could be Aztec, New Mexico, isn't it? Where just loads of uh, them keep appearing or appeared at the same time. And loads of people came out and just watched all these lights. And it's just like, uh, how could you explain this shit? The trouble is, though, we do live in a world now where everyone can just Photoshop and all that stuff. And because we live in a world of CGI, things come and go, and we go, oh, yeah, okay, cool. And we desensitize. Oh, yeah. Okay, and let's, cool. not, let's not forget the famous. 40s story which people still talk about to stay with roswell which is in new mexico you know and now we've got area 51 and i've used our quotation marks you know this secret government base that definitely exists area 51 definitely exists it but, does and they, they, but, they, they, but what the fuck goes on there well, we area, don't know. Well, well what the government says for area 51 is the fact that it's just a basically a area for testing and developing aircrafts um when once the public started getting a bit closer to it, they brought more land and they cornered all further and further apart because people were going on hills and watching down and stuff. Um, have you ever Google Maps um, Area 51? No, I haven't. Have you? It's blank. It's blocked. There's certain. There's about no, five or no, six Russian, places around the world. No, Russian satellites. Blocked. You can. I think there's a feed with a Russian satellite. You can do it through them, and they haven't blocked it. And you can... Um, damn Russians. But, I mean, that was the goddamn Russians. Do we have uh, Russian listeners? Oh, probably. Probably here listens to it because they're probably there drinking vodka as to have neck and vodka every time we say pro. I love your stereotype there. Straight to it. Straight drinking to vodka. vodka. Russian around here and there. Yeah, but it's cold there though, isn't it? That's why I drink vodka. It's cheap. Yeah. That's, I'm Brilliant. not... I'm not be, be, that's not me being rude or stereotypical over there. That's me just being... Let's go to the basics. Let's drink some vodka to keep warm. And have a laugh. Everyone loves a vodka now and again. Everyone loves a laugh. <laughs> right. Crack on. <laughs> so we've got this list of all these different things. We've got some of the, like, the classic classic sightings. Obviously, you say the Roswell Interesting. Obviously, Rendlesham Forest. we got one in England. Yeah. Well, there's been a few sightings in England. Um... And that was a really interesting one. And that is the, uh, the actual Air Force going out to look at... Uh, seeing lots and going out. And actually, a couple of the guys actually saw it for themselves. They saw this crazy shit, you know. Did you see the one in Bristol only about two weeks ago that I posted up on our Facebook page? No. Um, there was one in Bristol over the channel. Um, the Bristol Channel, and there was what looked like, I guess you could only really describe it as what looked like a submarine, but it was up in the sky, uh, and it was above a cruise ship. And people say optical illusions. And oh, no, in the distance. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. It's very strange and interesting. The, there is there is the other thing. Uh, we are, obviously, if you go onto YouTube and just type in 2020 sightings, a little load of shit comes up, and we're getting stuff more and more. And thank God. God, in a way, thank God. So thank, thank alien gods. Thank whatever you want to thank. Um, that thank we, the civilizations, races from Prometheus. Whatever you like. Um, thank erections. Thank whatever you want. We have this technology now. We can capture uh, the, this stuff, and we're seeing it more and more and more, which is really cool. But nobody seems to, because we have so much shit on all the time coming at us all the time it passes us by we don't really care so much and like we're saying this stuff now going it's legit you could go see this footage they just released this year go check it out that's legit it, what is that it's obviously something else thing is though 
we don't know what's inside the objects moving around. That's that's the whole thing. We're like, oh, it could be an object. So we just pass it off as an object. We don't think of it as an actual thing flying out inside. And if we were there face to face with a thing, that would be fucking insane, wouldn't it? Really? That and is it? Uh, <clears throat> Is it an alien inside it, or is it the actual craft itself that is sentient and yeah. can therefore? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's what, what I'm if, saying. What if aliens aren't actually physical like us, and they're actually, you know, a metallic, or they're a cloud, a cloud of vapor that, that floats into side, inside a, a spaceship? It could be anything. I don't is know. It, and is this why people don't freak out because they can't specifically see an alien? They just see an. Uh, it's just a dot on the screen moving really fast. That doesn't register enough to them. It's not like you know uh, whatever. It, what know about what um? What about alien sightings then? Aliens themselves, aliens and people. Well, who exactly. Claim... And people will say like they've been taken. There's 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 fucking tons of that shit. It's tons and there's the whole cat, cattle mutilation stuff. That, that's um, there's so much stuff involved in this. We we could like, crop do, circles. Yeah, exactly. It goes on and on and on, and we could do. We could go I knew on you were going to be. I know. I, passionate I, shit about this. That's what I'm saying. To you. I'm not like a UFO expert, but I've always, as a kid, been into this shit. I've always been into the Loch Ness monster. I've always been into fucking uh, Bigfoot. I was talking you know. to our fellow Legion brother in arms, RJ McCready, about this, and there is something certain people like us guys that are all listening to this podcast and, and, and follow a lot of these horror movies, we love a mystery, whether it's UFOs, Bigfoot, and this is one Loch of the Ness biggest monster. though. This is bigger than any of the others. Oh god, yeah. This is just this is just yeah. But you know, it would like I say that it breaks civilizations down if if it actually happened. It's really insane, and we're going to get more into it when we come to World of the Strange, and also we've got some bits to talk about in the outro relating to it as well. Mm. Um, I think it's safe to say... all these reports, man. There's so many. It's crazy. I think it's safe to say that we both are genuine believers in it. We're not conspiracy theorists, but there's so much out there that how how can it not be even slightly real? Do you know what I mean? It... I don't know. And I, 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 if, I, if not, where does it come from? Is it uh, the other alternative? Is it's the mind playing trick? So it's going to be something everybody has in mind. Not a drug you've induced or taken. It's going to be something which the mind releases, like not DMT when you die or something. Some something the mind's releasing, and so it makes you see different things in the sky. That's the only thing you can say for everybody seeing these things. That's the only thing, and they happen to be in a certain situation when this uh, chemical was released in their brain. Apart from that, why else? Is it why else is there? Seriously, what what else is it? All these sort of things. How can you just rule it off and say, "Oh, it's nothing"? It's they're all different objects, all different colours, all different pe- people from walks of life, military as well. Footage of it, and the and, and official military footage now as well. Exactly, you know, official. Hey guys, these have been something we've been holding on to for twenty years. We're allowed to release them now. Here you go, General Public. Have a re- have a look at that. We've no idea what the fuck these objects are. And you can hear from the pilots' reactions. They're literally, yeah, they're excited actually. Some of them, they're like, "Whoa, he's just broke whatever speed barrier!" Yeah, 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 and, you yeah, know, yeah. They're just like, yeah. they're impressed. They're excited. They've never seen anything like it. They, you, you can tell that they feel they're on the edge well, of something well, incredible. They, well, those guys are fascinated in engineering and, and uh, the craft of ships and um, um, sorry, airplanes being built and stuff like that. Um, so they, they could be looking at it in a. Uh, that sort of thing. They also oh, know. Right. They, they also know the limits. It's like gearheads, of what, you know. But they also know the limits of what. At that point, a lot of these um, fighter pilots, even like guys, especially now in 2020, they know the limits that, that we can achieve as, as a human within a, a craft. Yeah. So when they see something that is surpassing that, they think, "Wow, what that? What is that? That's going twice as fast as me from stationary." To the, you know, and when you see like it's when you see a bunch of them that are moving in unison as well. Do you know what I mean? And they're all doing this kind of dance and stuff. And you're like, what the fuck is this? It's crazy, absolutely crazy. Yeah, yeah. Well, Fa- in the words of the in the words of the um, oiled up, chain wearing, sweaty saxophonist from the Lost Boys. I thought you were going to say me, but okay, because I'm. I'm, 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 I'm I still believe. I still believe. I have to get him on for an interview. Oh, sexy man. Sexy, <laughs> sexy man. Sexy greased well, up man. Let's get into some sexy alien goodness now then. Um, 
we are going to take a we're going to listen to a trailer for our next movie that the first movie that we're going to be covering which is the fourth kind from 2009 gav are you ready to get ready and get physical what, what am I going to do this? Get physical, 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 physical. Do you know what we haven't sung for ages before we kick into the trailer? Run DMZ? No. Mask Crusaders. What is it over time? Over time. time. No, we're getting Mask that. Run. No, we're off. It's like we're doing that thing where you start <clears> singing <throat> it, then the other one sings, and then someone else, and it's like a delay. It didn't work. Let's not do Let's that. Let's go to a trailer. Let's not do that. All right. Can you state your name for the camera? Dr. Abigail Tyler. Okay, where would you like to begin? I am actress Mila Jovovich, and I will be portraying Dr. Abigail Tyler. This film is a dramatization of events that occurred October 2000. Every scene in this movie is supported by archive footage. Some of what you're about to see is extremely disturbing. I wake up in the middle of the night almost every night. There's nothing unusual waking you up. There's one thing. There's an owl at my window. An owl. His eyes are big. A white owl just looking at me. Had you ever seen it before? Tommy? When I was a kid, just staring at me. I've seen it a lot. Every night this week. Four, three, two. Tell me about the owl. It doesn't look like a normal owl. There's no owl. It's not an owl. <laughs> that voice is speaking Sumerian, the oldest language in human history. You can go into any Sumerian exhibit and see etchings and sculptures of men in space suits and oxygen masks. Rockets that look like Apollo. Do you believe in abduction theories? You don't mean alien abductions, do you? There's more fear in his eyes than I've ever seen in my life. What's wrong? There are more missing people in Nome than any other town in Alaska. I have to get this out of my head because it's dug in there and I can't think straight. What'd you see? You were there! I can't explain it. Someone or something came into my room. And it took me away. Great, so our first review for our alien abduction special is The Fourth Kind from 2009. This is the synopsis. A thriller involving an ongoing unsolved mystery in Alaska, where one town has seen an extraordinary number of unexplained disappearances during the past 40 years. And there are accusations of a federal cover-up. Yep. There we go. That's um, the synopsis. I really enjoyed this the first time I watched it, and it stayed in my collection until I watched it again recently for this, and didn't enjoy it at all. Uh, I enjoyed the concept and the idea in it, but no. But you say you like it, so this will be an interesting conversation. Yeah, so let me talk about that first of all. Um, so, I, yes, the first time I saw it, it really freaked me out, scared me a bit in places. Um, and it's a, it's a really interesting idea. And even watching it, probably the third or fourth time this was that I'd seen it, I, I, I always forget that it's kind of based on true events, but it's not based on true events, but they, they do make it out to be like that very much. So that almost they're trying to cash in on that whole Blair Witch thing. Um, if Blumhouse would have been going at a time, this would have been the Blumhouse film. Oh yeah. hundred percent, hundred percent. But um, I think the reason I really love it, Gab, is it for some reason really gets under my skin and I'll explain why. <clears throat> so any movie, any horror movie that has uh, tape recordings, replayed and they find something on the tape recording that shouldn't be there okay yeah Yeah. so whether it's an audio whether it's a video you know on the exorcist you know any of any any of these movies where they record something and then you hear like well that's a language that not been spoken in five thousand years anytime you hear anything like that that always get i don't know why it always gets under my skin um and this movie 
as a testament to it, third or fourth time I'd watched it, but the other night I watched it for this. I was watching it on my own in the dining room, and I had to take a break at one point because I was getting a bit too freaked out. The back door was behind me, wide open. Um, and I, I just thought, I've got to shut the back door, go and speak to Alice for five minutes, calm down, and then come back and watch this film. I don't know why it gets under my skin. It really does. I think it's th something to do with the owls. The spooky owls. Yeah, so tell me what, what your overall thoughts before we get into this on this one. Well, I like the concept of it. Um, I uh, Straight away when you get, I'm not going into it, I'm just saying that, straight away when you get Mila Jovovich say, hi, I'm Mila Jovovich, I'm an actor in this film. And the fourth wall's broken straight away, you're like, hmm? This, this, so, I think what's annoying, back in the day when I watched this, I wouldn't have known that it was made up. Now, I have access to the internet very much clearly in my pocket. I would have done then as well, iPhones around. No, no, they weren't actually, were they? 2009, probably not. <coughs> so it wasn't as I, I can just quickly bop out my phone like you do when you're watching movies nowadays or you check things out, etc., etc. So I would have gone into this going, oh, wow. And I love the way it's done. I love the fact that they've taken C um, uh, camcorder footage from a person who supposedly was an, uh, a person whose children were abducted etc etc and all these other people who say they've been abducted and stuff and it's their, it's their footage from the doctor's point of view in their uh, their doctor uh, meetings you know and let me translate to what Gav's saying listeners sorry because yeah, I'm, I'm fucking this all <clears throat> what Gav's saying is what they've cleverly done and why this movie does for me stand that a little bit is what they've done with this movie is they've pretended that um and this is a spoiler, but they pretended that this is based on true events and they've got a hold of this CCTV footage and these interviews with a woman whose husband and children and herself and other people in her town in Alaska were abducted by aliens. She's a psychiatrist and they've got hold of all these interviews and CCTV footage. And what they've done is they've then said, hi. I'm Leo Jovovich, and I'm here to say we've remade all of this footage, and we've they basically done a dramatization of it. And what they do a lot of the, and this is I don't think I've really seen this before, or after really. I'm, I'm sure there's movies that do it, but they very cleverly sometimes side by side show you the real, and that's with quote marks footage, side by side with like Milo Jovovich doing her bit, and. Or, or a different character, and and they basically showed you how they've recreated what's what actually happened twenty years ago in this Alaskan town, and it does give it that sense of this is something a little bit different. Whether you like it or not, it's definitely something original and different. Yeah, um, throw in cool. throw in aliens and a bit of a Twin Peaks vibe feel to the town, and some and like you know like the movie or not it's got some great actors in it i'm not saying mili Yakovich is a particularly amazing actress but you've got will Patton in it um as the sheriff and i always like him and everything he's in um and you've also got elias Cotius in it uh, casey jones from robert, the ninja turtles robert um what's it called robert de niro like uh he's her psychiatrist buddy I don't yeah, know if yeah. I'd call him a Robert De Niro, but he was Casey Jones in the Ninja Turtles movies. Oh, no, I'm thinking of Elias e e e e e e e Cotius. Yeah, is that yeah. what you just said? Oh, fuck yeah, no. yeah, yeah. I'm not doing it. Anyway, you explained it a lot better than me. So I like the idea and the concept. Just sprinkle on top of that, sorry. Just also sprinkle on top of that, for me, some genuinely uh, chilling moments as well. And the fact that this is a topic that we both discussed is quite close to our heart, then that's why I like this film. Um, well, like I say, I like the idea and the concept of it, and you explained it a lot clearer than I was. It would take me a long time, and I'd have then forgotten what I was saying, and then it'd been awful. It's the only reason I'm on this podcast, guys. The other issue with this film, <laughs> I know you just said, help me and give me a little guiding hand, a little probe once in a while. Oh, um, yeah. The other issue is though, it does it. It doesn't really start up with a defining story. You don't. You, you like media is playing this person who is going to be the protagonist in it. It's not a defining point of story. It's kind of a bit confusing to go, and then it doesn't really get into it until like an hour into it, when like the kid's been taken and the police come along. And then it's kind of gone into a more basic and easier story to understand. Do you know what I mean? It's very yeah. confusing when it comes in because of the way it's split screen going into this footage. And then looking at this time and going, oh, so it's made up, so it's not real. And that kind of really disappointed me. It maybe put a bad taste in my mouth. I don't know, but I just couldn't get along with this film that well. And it's a shame. It's, it's uh, been in my collection for years. It's a slow burn, for sure. Uh, and it's that, that stuff doesn't bother me, really. 
it's a, an ulti- ultimately i think i feel it's rewarding if you're a fan of in alien movies or abduction movies or i wouldn't call this found footage but there's definitely um some found footage vibe about this isn't there almost like they're jumping on that bandwagon it's hard to explain it, it's almost like they're recreating their own found footage found footage was at the height of like yeah, so it's, it's definitely pushing the boundaries of originality, and they're, they're very. Yeah, they're, I like the idea. Yeah, for sure, for sure, and and it feels like uh, much like Fire in the Sky, which we'll talk about later, and maybe that's just because alien movies do that. But a really good alien story or movie always feels a bit like an extended episode of the X Files. Uh, this one certainly feels a bit like that, and Fire in the Sky does as well. It's a slow burn. It's only an hour and thirty-eight minutes. It shouldn't be a slow burn. Like, I know you can't say that. It's just movies that are slow burns. They're just slower type films. I understand. But it just, I don't know. It felt, it felt a bit of a slug at times. Slog. Slug? slug? This movie also touches on slugs. No, this movie also touches on ancient languages and ancient civilizations, which, again... Yeah, that, that stuff's the creepy. They're quite creepy when they start sitting up and they levitate. There's one point where it's really good. It goes into the actual footage of levita- the, 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 the normal cinematic camera doing the levitating off the bed. and oh, oh, Then it cuts to the cam, the, the original footage, and it takes away the whole, like, what it had a moment ago. I was like, that's really good. Oh. You know? Yeah, I know, well, I mean, I'm 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 a fan. You're voices, less a fan. No, some but let's... Like, when they speak and the voices are coming through their mouths, that's kind of creepy. Mm. So I can understand where you're coming from with the creepiness. So it's I, quite I, um. You're a it's, cat. I am a scaredy cat. It's quite a. It's quite a difficult story to just sort of narrate and tell. But yeah. I'll do my best if we just go through it, and we're not going to spend ages on it. But I'm going to go through it now. So ba- basically, we start off with Mina Yakovich uh, waking up in the middle of the night to her husband being stabbed brutally hundreds of times in the chest, and uh, he gets killed. So that's that's the end of him. So she ups with her upsticks with her children and heads to a place called Nome in Alaska. Um, and this is where she will set up her psychiatry. So she's a psychiatrist, and she has a friend played by Elias Cotius, who's a psychiatrist as well. Um, and uh, we, like Gav said, the first very first part of this movie is, "Hi, I'm Mila Jokovic, and this is a dramatization of blah blah blah." So we're like, okay, so this is is this true? Is this not? And obviously, it's not true. But I do like the fact that they're going all out drama school style, trying to make you really believe. I, I, you know, I really enjoyed the fact that she goes, it, it takes you off guard when she says, "Hi, I'm you know I'm that actor you've come to watch in the movie, and uh, I'm playing this person." Look like, what? Looks like interesting. Imagine if every Resident Evil movie started with that. Hi, I'm Mila Yakovich. I'm really sorry that you've paid another six pounds to come to the cinema and watch Resident Evil 12. Another piece of hot steaming dog shit. Just, at that point, you just bite into your hot dog and look to your person you've gone to cinema with. Oh. And it's and and you look to your left and it's actually Mila Yakovich. She's, she's like, person. she's she like, I'm really it, sorry about this. Every person literally <laughs> she's like the first one was all right the second one wasn't too bad the third one was pushing it we made about 25 of these and i'm so sorry about that no, i should have just stuck to the fifth element shouldn't i it's such, and we're like they it's, got so we bad it's just like oh my god not enough on their movies it's almost like those um the, what those other ones with the black leather woman clothes oh uh, well cape, you mean underworld yeah, they made like underwear 62 of those they made underworld, yeah oh my yeah. god yeah the first one was good. The we second one was shit. And wolves and so on. I've only seen the first one. Episode nine is like just if it is a nine, I don't know. Jason versus underwear. I don't know what's happening. Anyway, let's bring it back to Mina Yakovich. She was an underwear model. Um, let's bring it back there. So yes, she had this traumatic experience where her husband got killed, and um, that will come into play much much later. In fact, at the end of the movie. Um, so she gets regressed, and regression and hypnosis are a huge part of this film, uh, which again is something that chills me a little bit. Really, I've never been hypnotized. Have you ever been hypnotized? Uh, um, yeah, a little you strike bit. me as the kind of man that has been hypnotized. A little bit, but actually, my mind's pretty hard to crack. So that doesn't that that really surprises me. I think I can get into your mind quite quite easily. <laughs> I know you'd you'd think, wouldn't you? Just breaking it. It's like my breaking an egg. mind. Just, just like, oh, the door's wide open, isn't it? Look, there's a sign saying, come in, have a look. <laughs> come in and have a look around. Tell you what take, you want. Tell you what you want, it's free. <laughs> Leave a donation if you want, but don't worry. 
Uh, right. So anyway, uh, yeah. So trying um, regression hypnosis are a big part of this as well, which is a bit spooky. So she gets regressed because she really wants. She can't understand why she couldn't see the killer of her husband's face. So she gets regressed and. In the hypnosis and with the regression, there's just nothing. She can't see his face, so that's that. So she's she moves to Alaska to find some clarity. She got she comes a little doctor there. It's a bit like arachnophobia, you know these movies where a doctor moves out in the middle of nowhere. Um, she moves out there and she sets up a little um, surgery. It does show she, enough she, location she, shots. It is a nice. It's a beautiful toy. place. Yeah, and it doesn't show enough of that stuff. It shows the hour Alaska. that stuff. Funny, yeah, 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 it should have shown more of that stuff. It feels very contained. For sure. Internal, you know. Well, we, we start off with this mystery uh, vibe, certainly for the first sort of half an hour or so, where she's interviewing um, several patients, four or five patients from the town, and each of them suffers from a very similar thing where they cannot sleep. Uh, they wake up in the middle of the night and they are woken by an owl looking in their window and the owl they feel like the owl is staring at them or watching them owls are kind of creepy aren't they they are kind of creepy right, the go look at that. It's a there's like, a shot in this movie. there's a fantastic shot in this movie where they yeah, draw yeah, yeah. camera pans past an owl yeah. and its head follows the camera and when it got 360 i thought they've cgi this and then i remembered oh no owls are just fucking mental and can turn their heads all yeah. the way around they, it's they an incredible it. uh they planned it so that it goes around the owl so the owl uh stares at the camera so it's staring, it's at, really it's staring at the audience as the camera goes then the camera just stops where it wants to uh set the was... location of the room and then we go inside the room it's that cool. was the point i paused it and came to see yeah, my wife because i thought it's cool. creeping out there oh, it no. was i wish i'd been there i'd have held your hand the owl, the owls are scary, and we've got one in our garden actually, and it sounds so soothing, but I've never seen it. I've only ever heard it, and actually, although owls sound nice, they are quite creepy to look at. And have you ever seen? Love. Have you ever seen a baby owl? No. Okay, you need to Google baby owls. They're born with no feathers. They've got great big bulbous heads and big green, uh, big eyes. And they look exactly like the grey aliens that everybody says. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, and somebody popped their head up in their attic once, took a picture of them and said, no wonder people think aliens exist. And it's like two or three baby owls and they do look like aliens. It's, are you Googling it now? Yeah. I um, want you to see a reaction to this. Well, no, I, uh... They look kind of creepy. They look. Uh, creepy. They look kind of weird. Yeah. Creepy AF. Yeah. That yeah. means as fuck. Okay, so <clears throat> anyway, so she's interviewing all these people, and they've all got this similar experience where they all see an owl, but none of them can sleep. And as she regresses them further and gets them to think about it more, they all get a bit more freaked out and say, "Something's coming in my room. Something's walking into my room," and they all break down and scream when they try to remember what came in their room. A couple of them even say it wasn't an owl. So it, it it's, it's quite bone. creepy. It was me. I was staring in your window yeah. going to eat to woo, to eat to woo. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, we also find out a little bit about Mila Yakovic's family. Her daughter is blind. Apparently she went blind as soon as her dad died. I didn't even know that. Is that a thing? No, I didn't even know her daughter was blind in this. Her daughter was blind in this. Yeah, her daughter was blind. I fucking didn't even know. So didn't even catch you that. Didn't even know. Yeah, it's not really. She's not like carrying a white stick or doing daredevil kung fu moves, but she's blind, and apparently it's a, it's a trauma that happens that can happen to people. I don't. I haven't looked it up. I don't know if that's okay, real. So but how did it happen? Well, it's her way of dealing with her dad dying. What? She went blind because of her dad died. Yep. How's that happen? I, that's what I've just said. I don't fucking know. I'm not a doctor. Why don't you know these things, doctor? Not an eye surgeon, am I? Bone, your seventies yes. porn all over you. Oh, all over me. Squirted all over you. Doctor Bone is in the house. The love doctor. Doctor Bone's in the house. <laughs> well, I don't know how, where we're going with this, but let me bring it bring it back to this. So, yes, yeah, she's blind which happened not long after her husband died. She also has a son who really resents Milijakovic. He's like, you let it happen. You know, why didn't you do anything when dad was killed? Um, 
so everyone's struggling with dad's death this is where we get that creepy 360 owl head rotational thing that's really cool i paused it at that point as i've said um media media starts having or dr tyler starts having these second interviews with her patients where she starts regressing them slightly further she regresses the first guy and she says you know tell me a bit more and he says again something at my door and he, he starts screaming again he wakes up and he doesn't want to talk about what he saw she's like well what you know can you describe it in any way what it was and he says all i know is they come to visit me and they visit quite often so we're getting a, an alien vibe here a bit of an alien vibe then we get this 911 recording of that same guy. So she's regressed him and he freaked out. He, f- he f- trashed about her room a little bit in her office. Then we get an, an a, apparently a real 911 recording spliced in with a dramatization of it. And this guy later on has got his wife and children hostage mm. um, in his house. And the police are called out and he's on the phone saying, bring me Dr. Tyler, bring me Dr. Tyler now. So she goes, she's woken up in the middle of the night by the police and she's, taken to his house and they, again they keep splicing between this apparently real footage of my head siege. Like keeps rubbing on my nipple what annoying. are you bored with what i'm saying gav no i'm not no no because when you say about this 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 happens this is the foot the black and white footage we cut into when he does the shots is qu- almost a bit disturbing like, yeah so please, in the please end um, please please camera footage. she turns up and he says to her i don't know what this means and he says a strange phrase in a language that none of us understand he says it's in my head and i need to get out then he shoots his wife shoots his kids and blows his brains out and they kind of blur it out but also in the dramatization they don't and you're like what the fuck so she's just been woken up yeah. dragged to this house by the police and then witnessed like and a then, guy killing himself and his children it's kind of blaming her looking at her going this you've done this it's your fault what have you done when you hypnotized him and it's a bit like it's a bit fucking close-minded to think it's the hypnotist that's fucking well he yeah you're right he drags into his police custody office and he says you know tell me what happened she says he said he saw an owl he said he thinks it was something else and the sheriff's like I think your hypnosis is fucked with his brain and made him kill his family. And she's like, well, no, no, hang on. I'm a professional. Like, that's ridiculous. Um, she says to him, you, I think something is happening in this town. In, and their town is called Nome, without the G, N-O-M-E. And she said, I think something's happening here. And I think you don't want to admit that. I think you know there's been lots of missing persons cases, lots of suicides and murders all in the last few years. Even my husband's murder hasn't been solved yet. You must admit there's something strange. And obviously she's touched the nerve because he he gets quite angry with her. Uh, they have a bit of a, a, an argument. He's, and, he's kind of got it in for it a little bit, hasn't he? He really doesn't like her very much. And we, we do Is find out why. Is, yeah, yeah. What's the history on that? Well, we'll find out towards the end, don't we? Because um, there is a truth behind um, her husband's murder. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I so he kind of is playing along. Well, actually, we don't. No, he isn't. Though, not to, because when he's not, like, yeah, not to spoil the movie, but he, as well. you wonder if a lot of this is in her head because. Oh, okay. To jump ahead, guys, if you haven't seen this movie, you might want to stop now. But to jump ahead, her husband wasn't murdered. He committed suicide, and the way that she de- deals with the murder of. Uh, the suicide of her husband for me, yeah. is that she puts it down as an intruder came in and stabbed him and then potentially builds up these alien cases in her head um so it's difficult to know what is and isn't real is some of what's happening real is the sheriff you know some of the cc to her she's got these videotapes we're supposedly watching back so they are coming saying exactly. stuff so it's not what is belief and what isn't i don't know see this is a little quite complex for what it is it really is and the fact you just throw in there oh and the daughter's blind i don't even fucking notice don't matter don't matter about the daughter um her friend casey jones from the ninja turtles elias Cody, says she speaks to him and he says look i think you need to take some kind of a sabbatical you need some time off there's a lot of stress going on here plus you just saw a guy blow his brains out and kill his kids um Fair play. so he, st- he says, like, I've, I've, well, he arrives in town. She says, I can't believe you've come all the way here. And he says, I think I'm going to stick around for a bit just to keep an eye on things. I think you, uh, you know, you need a bit of help. Well, 
thank God he sticks around because the next set of patients come in, guy and his wife, and they say, we heard what happened. The last guy you hypnotized blew his brains out. I want to be hypnotized too. Yeah. And she's like, okay. What, what, and she, he's like, basically, he's basically, I want, I want to know if I've got that inside me so that we can nip it in the bud. And his wife's like, yeah, if that's all right, can you do it now? So she calls Elias Cotius in and they, they start to regress him together. And he says, help me remember. She says, okay. So she, um, start the regression. Tell me about the owl again. Someone's at the door. They come, they come all the time. And she wakes him up because he won't stop screaming. He, he eventually does wake up and kind of throws up everywhere. And he says, I saw them, and all I can tell you is they're not from here, and it's not an aliens. owl. You just the aliens just got your voice a minute ago. That's you. He says, whoever they are, they're not from here, and it's not an owl. There's voices in my head. That's how they talk to you. They talk to you inside your own head, and they take you away somewhere. I don't want to remember anymore and I can't remember anymore. So chilling. For me, that's great. I love that mystery that Yeah, it's okay, but I still wish there'd just been a, a, a just a focus point on on her and more I don't know. I was missing something. Something just I just missed something in this film when watching it. Well Milia Yakovic sits down with her buddy now and says, Look, we need to talk. Do you believe in abduction theories and he says oh yeah yeah kidnappings happen all the time she's like no you fucking idiot aliens mm. because there's something but with all these stories that sort of ties into that mm. he says absolutely not this is a bunch of bollocks this is rubbish i do not believe in any of this stuff so um she her suddenly at this point her uh Mediakovic's assistant runs in the room and she says Dr. Tyler, uh, the voice. She says, I don't know what to do. <laughs> so uh, she's like, what the fuck's going on with this uh, secretary bitch? So she goes out there and grabs her dictaphone. A and she dic- plays it. Dictaphone. I knew. I know a dictaphone. D- d- do you? No, I don't really know where I was going with that. No, I don't. Is that like, there's like another terminology for dick pics. Dick to phone. Is there? No, I don't know. You're just making this shit up? Yep. So she grabs her dick to phone, and she... I love how we're just beavers and butthead already, aren't we? Pretty much. You, you're not, dick. You're not oh, really going to oh, get any you, sensible you, professionals... You said dick. Oh, that we're yeah. That level. No. Dick. <laughs> dick. Yeah, we, are, we are essentially children. Uh, some, uh, teenagers, but yeah. Um, so she grabs her dick to phone, and she listens back to her dictation which is basically her talking about um the owls and all of her patients and then all of a sudden on the dictaphone she doesn't remember any of this and elias cotis is in the room with her she hears loads of screaming and it's herself screaming on the dictaphone and then she hears a strange voice which is played at the same time as the uh uh, the other voice underneath it so so this this is there's not a way that you can do this because you can't change the picture fun voice but still have the other one there you could do it if you laid it all out in an editing program but as it's play recorded one stereo file or mono file yeah so it it's basically it's legit and it's like a voice just sort of going and i don't even know it's just a strange language some of it's like fuzzy to hear because of the distortion um she listens to that tape over and over and over and over and over again in her bedroom and she starts remembering um she looks on her shoulder and she's got like bruises and scratches and she thinks i don't remember how that got there then she looks on the floor and she sees fingernail scratches from where she remembers being dragged out of the room and then there's a bit that made me jump where she remembers something coming in her room the door slowly opening then suddenly loads of figures but we don't see them come in and hold her down there's lots of them she doesn't really remember it but it's um it's quite creepy and she's starting to remember now and we're starting to think okay so she's she's potentially one of the abductees as well in this um she 
goes into her husband's office, her dead husband's office, and finds a book on ancient languages and ancient carvings and a lot of them have got sort of alien style stuff within it and within that book there well she actually she contacts the guy that's written the book a professor and she asks him about this and he says well a man did call me from this number he said his name is john she's like yeah that probably was my husband with an alias and he says okay and he's asking me about an ancient sumerian language and Sumerian is apparently one of the oldest languages known to mankind. It's like 5,000 years old or something insane like that. Um, so they have this chat on the phone. And, you know, she says, yeah, your husband was asking me about languages. He was very interested. He wanted a very, very brief and quick history lesson. Next thing you know, he arrives in Nome, Alaska, this guy. And, uh, hello, hello, professor. Come on in. They discuss the ancient dead language. And they start translating the words that are on her dictaphone. So it's a little bit exorcist, this, for me. It's a bit creepy. And the three key words that they can get out of all the noise and stuff are the words creation, examine, and experiment. And, or examine or experiment, and ruin hmm. is the third and final word. Hmm. He says to her, those are the words I can pick out. It's a language that no one has spoken for thousands of years, but that's what I can pick out. He said, the only thing I would say is, the voice doesn't sound human. Yeah. Well, no shit, Sherlock. Jesus, who's speaking that language? They discuss ancient sculptures, like I've said. He said, look at these. Some of these look like rockets. Some of these people in these carvings look like they're wearing face masks. Um, they look like aliens. And again, Elias Cotis does not believe any of this. The second patient at this point that she regressed suddenly has um, a bit of a, a moment and she gets another phone call. She's probably thinking, oh, for fuck's sake, what's going to happen now? <laughs> so she goes around to see Scott. Like oh, Scott. Isn't it? The doctor going into the town and people just drop it dead. It's not my fault. Every time he goes anywhere, what spiders are biting people. What a great movie. We covered that a long time ago. It's such a good film, isn't it? Yeah, good film. It's a great summer movie, actually, Gav. I have to get a it's getting hot now. It's time to put on a round of I know. I'm bare back again, aren't I? My, uh... I think we talked about this. My ex-girlfriend was one of the worst arachnophobes ever. You remember her, don't you? Yes. And, uh... Do you remember the story about, about me saying, look, I'll cure your ratnophobia. Watch this movie with me. <laughs> I what, put on a ratnophobia. That didn't, that yeah, didn't it, help at all. Well, we're not together anymore and I married Alice. So, um... <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. Well, there we go. Love, <laughs> anyway, love, moving love, back. Relationships and love chat with Mr. Dr. Bone. If you really want to know if the woman loves you, put on a ratnophobia. No. Um, so she goes to visit Scott who she last regressed and he is in bed he's like a stiff corpse he's fever, and he, he's got fever he's sweating he can't move and he's got marks on his arms and he's like can you help me can you help me she's like okay look can we film this and he's like I don't really know if I want you to be doing this or even to regress me she said look we need to do this and he says alright okay I do need to get this out of my head this message in my head and this is where we get another splice between so-called real footage and the other footage. See, this, is the, this is the good bit. And then it goes to the This actual. really scared me, this bit. Mm. Yeah, what, when what, he what, first... Yeah. Because it kind of distorts. You can't quite see, but you can see his face is incredibly distorted. And he's almost bending over in a very strange way. And again, he, he starts floating off the bed a little bit. Um... And he starts speaking in Sumerian, uh, Sumerian, sorry. The footage all distorts, we can't see anything. So she she goes home. The next thing we see is her. The next day, fuck this, I'm leaving Alaska. She's packing her kids' bags. We're, and they're like, well, mummy, why are we leaving? She's like, don't worry about it. We're getting the fuck out of here. You don't need to know why. Well, as they're trying to leave, the sheriff knocks on the door and he's like, what the fuck did you do to Scott? Yeah. Scott's back is broken. He cannot move. He's now paralyzed permanently from the, the neck down. But like Whatever you did there, during that His wife was there. Her mate was there as well. It's like, well, you can, the Sheriff has got nothing on this at all. You obviously did it, this. You you obviously did this with words. You made this physical action of his happening. It's like, what a fucking dickhead. 
Well, he says, I'm going to have to arrest you here. Um, but thankfully, what Eli's case is... What could you possibly arrest her for? Backbreaking. Hypnotic backbreaking. I, this dude is I've been arrested for that before. Have you? Hypnotic backbreaking or hypnotic breakdancing? Mm-hmm. Um, both at the same time. <laughs> I'm not going to go the Hypnotic there. Break... <laughs> I don't, I can the hypnotic breakdancing thinking. squad. No, no, we're going to start going off some tangent about hypnotic breakdancing. Let's not do it. Come on, stay on it. Okay, so uh, he doesn't arrest her because Elias Cotier says, look, whatever you think, I witnessed it as well. Exactly. And... She didn't do anything. So the sheriff says, right, we're going to put you under 24-hour observation. Every move you make, there's going to be a cop outside your house. You, Elias Cotis, you're going to come with me for some questioning. Um, So she talks about, at this point, she talks about the different levels of encounters. So encounter of the first, second, third, and fourth kind. So the first kind is, I believe, where you just see something. The second kind is where you interact i think the third kind is where um you you have physical contact or something and the fourth kind is where you're abducted and probed right up the bottom i'm gonna check this for you sir can you do that i was hoping you would you're usually quite good at this sort of thing okay she says to so there's a lot of stuff with mila yakovic talking into her dictionary now saying it's all connected the missing people, my husband, etc., etc. Anyway, the next thing we see is the cop that's guarding her house, sat in his car. He kind of wakes up in the middle of the night and he suddenly sees something on top of their house. And he thinks, what the hell is that? And obviously he's got a dash cam because he's a cop. So he, he runs out of the house and as he gets close to it, suddenly what looks like a ship just before the distortion kicks in on the video footage flies at the house and all you hear is him saying oh my god oh my god a beam of light a beam of light it's pulling them out of the ceiling they're pulling it and, and apparently something is pulling the child one of the children out of the house out of the roof um it's loads of other cops arrived now so he's called him back up and he says yeah, it was a beam of light um it took somebody out of the ceiling the sheriff doesn't believe any of it and they find Mina Yakovic on the floor, crying and screaming. They took my baby. They took my baby. I just want my baby back. And she said, I want my baby back, baby back, baby back. I want my baby back. Rib. <laughs> Is that what she said? Baby back ribs. All right. First encounter uh, of uh, the first kind is simply a sighting of a UFO ship. The second encounter... Now, before you go into this, what can I just say how amazing that was that I went from, she wants her baby back, baby back, baby back, baby back, baby back, ribs. Is that what happened? First encounter. So it was so smooth then. So first encounter, sorry. Sighting of an alien ship. Sighting of a UFO ship. Second encounter is when a ship leaves evidence. The third encounter is when you have a direct encounter with an extraterrestrial being. Fourth encounters when you're taken on board with alien beings. And the is there more than four? And the fifth encounter ah, car, what's five? is when humans initiate contact with aliens. What about six? There isn't a six. Do you want me to make it up? Uh, it's where you you make, make love to an alien and, and you create a half alien, half human hybrid. Close counter of the six sex, sex, sex point is where you get all lubed up and you have a big alien sexy green orgy. Slimy. Smelly. Can the woman from Total Recall with three boobs join in? Everyone's involved in uh, sexual capacities from oh, movies through the Does years. that mean that E.T.'s there with his great big bloody finger? Only the porn version of E.T. is there. And that's um, a ab- really disturbing thing. Please, guys, what, don't what look about, it up. What about the thing? The creature the, from the, the thing? The thing's there, yeah, and that's got, like, wiggly tentacles over it. Basically, it's a big mass orgy. That's the close encounters of the sex kind. Jesus Christ. Chewbacca, is he there? No, no Chewbacca's not there. What are you talking about? It's not an oh, alien. Oh, okay. He's filming it, is he? <laughs> Director. <laughs> Him and Yoda are filming cigars. it. No, Yoda's in it. Mm. Yoda's they in. know we must do next. Mm-hmm. Oh, Yoda's in it. Oh, good lad. Yeah, it's only this other Yoda's in it. Yeah. I was about to say Zoda. Wow. Zoda. Yoda's alien brother, Zoda. Dude, please. So, carry on. Her daughter is missing now, and this is where the cops like, okay, this is fucked. The sheriff says this is fucked up now. 
We're taking your son off of you. We're removing him from your custody. And she's like, oh, my babies. A little bit overacting, I must say, at this point. She rolls around on the floor. My babies. But that's fine. Um, and she says to her ice coatiers, I have to go to them. I have to go to the source in order to bring back my child. So he agrees to regress her. She gets regressed and they film it. And she tries to remember the night that she, on the dictaphone where she spoke to Mariam into the dictaphone. And she says, I saw the owl. He's looking at me. He's over me, he's smiling at me. Oh, it's not an owl. And we get a flashback. A flashback to a door opening, something coming in the room. Um, then we get a flashback of equipment and drills and probing devices. There's a bit where... You can just make out her feet like she's in a gynecologist chair and this big instrument starts heading in towards her thighs. You don't see any more than that. So you need to see, you know what's going to happen to her. Um, so she has a lot of terrible, weird flashbacks and the tape starts distorting. There's a lot of Sumerian happening here. She screams and begs for her child back. And then we get a translation. We get subtitles of what's being said in Samarian, it's it's things along the line along the line of i was here first um you you know i am creation and then the final chilling sentence that's said in Samarian is translated as i am god and to me that that really gets under my skin um, something about that gets uh, yeah, under was, my skin have, have you, did you miss the part about the spaceship coming down taking her daughter no i talked about that did you I think you were looking up the different levels of encounter while I was talking about that, Gav. Sorry, Rich, sorry, because I found this, again, really frustrating that that sheriff came in and went, uh, I would have been looking up the cameras, that's why I ignored you. Generally, I pay focus on you, Daniel Bone. I do. Um, Thank you! Um, uh, uh, I was really frustrated when the sheriff came and said, what have you done for then? And it's like, check, ask your guy outside, and then they just take her away. And it's like, no, look around the house. The kid has to be in the house. You didn't just vanish the kid. It's so also, if a trained cop the He's train copper said, well, I saw a beam of light suck somebody out of that scene in. You're yeah. going to be like, well... You must listen to a bit of that, and it's just so so frustrating. Anyway, yes, he says, I am God, which is quite a disturbing thing to say, and, you know... There's a bringing a little bit of religion into this and a little bit of supernatural into this as well, for me. Um, and then... Cut to... The room. We cut to the CC, the official footage, and the room's empty. So apparently, her and Elias Cotis and the guy that flew in the professor that wrote the book, all got taken, she says, taken up somewhere. And oh, up the garden path. They got taken right up the garden path. Oof. <laughs> <laughs> we both did that same <laughs> mess. <laughs> um, so, anyway, she comes back to Earth um, and she has some memories um, a little bit and then she wakes up in hospital. And this is where we get the reveal. She wakes up. And she's sort of got a big thing around her neck where she's always, almost broken her the neck. Wall and real. Yeah, so she's in her head. She wakes up in hospital where her and her uh, doctor, Eliza Cotius, and the professor were all taken aboard the spaceship. And then she begged for the child. They told her they were God. And then she wakes up in hospital. And the sheriff sat at the end of the bed and he says, look got something I want to tell you and it's really upsetting but I have to tell you this I'm really sorry and then uh, Elias Cotes comes in the room and says I'm here for you when you hear this news and you think okay what's what's happening and he holds up a picture of her husband dead with a hole in his head and a picture of her husband holding a gun dead and says you need to get it in your head that your husband committed suicide he wasn't killed by intruders that night he shot himself with his own gun in front of you and you've put up all these weird barriers and it's it's not real. But he says something very interesting and says, you can't help it. You can't help not knowing that you're insane. He said, that's the part of, that's the whole point of being insane is you don't know that you're insane. Yeah. And why not have this as a main focus throughout this whole fucking film? That would have been quite a good movie. It didn't really <laughs> get onto this to like an hour into it. It was so frustrating. Do you not agree? Yeah. He says to her, there was no intruder, there was no knife, it was a suicide, you've warped your memories. And he says to her, one final time, where is your daughter? 
because they Such cannot find her the anywhere. Fucking hell, she was there and the cop was there. For Christ's sake, you fucking inept penis. Oh my god, it's so frustrating. But all she says, all she says to that is, we all came back, and she didn't. Now, Elias Gotius just looks at it like you're, you're insane. So whether he did get abducted or whether he didn't, he doesn't remember any of it, and he doesn't seem to believe either. Um, and then we cut to the final scene, which is the real character that Milakovic is supposed to be playing, which is the real Dr. Tyrone. Yeah. yeah which but is he's, the, do you know she, which was the funniest thing? Sorry, sorry to interrupt. When they were filming, like, <clears throat> Mila falling over the, the sofa, all, all the actors doing things and that stuff that happening, then there's split screen at the other. They had to film this twice, setting up all the actors and stuff, the different actors, and do it twice. And it's so weird to do it, but I guess because they're trying to put it across as real footage. But it just seemed like, oh, just, just make it one movie, do you know what I mean? It could have been so much better, I think. It's, I think it's a product of its time. What? Tangent alert! Tangent alert! Go on then. Yeah, you've just reminded me of a movie that I watched that you told me to watch that I did. And me and Alice watched it, and it's one of our best movies of 2020, where they do a similar thing, where they had to recreate to the minuscule detail scenes from something else. And I'm talking oh, yeah, about yeah, The Disaster yeah. Artist, yeah. and it is such an incredible movie. James Franco is off the chain in it. It's very funny. He really commits to it. And it's not just funny, though, Gab. It's Hi, really Mark. heartwarming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, it, and it also brought a little bit of a tear to my eye at points because it's just genuinely such a lovely, moving I, story. I did very much enjoy it, yeah. Oh, hi, Mark. Oh, hi, Mark. I did not hit her. I did not. I did not. It's bullshit. It's bullshit. It's bullshit, it's man. Amazing. Are you tearing me apart? Tear me apart, Lisa. <laughs> my favorite bit is when they say, how old are you? And he goes, I'm the same age as you. Yeah, but what year were you born? The same year you were born. <laughs> he doesn't tell them anything. It's so funny. It's bullshit. Um, so this anyway, movie touch. ends, and then there's like some text comes up on the screen, and it goes and on and on and on, and more text. Well, it doesn't just end. Hang on, sorry. It, and I was like, oh my god, still going. Just, sorry. just reading it in a little bit. So the interviewer yeah. says to the real life character, um, "So how can we believe anything you say?" And she says recordings don't lie and she says i have to believe my daughter's still alive no matter how insane it feels i know that i'll see her again so you wonder if this is grief that's made her do all of this and think all of this and as they pan out we find out that she's in a wheelchair she's basically almost paralyzed um so that's a little little spin as well and then um the actors and the director talk about gnome the place in Alaska, so Mila Yakovich is like, hi, I'm the actress Mila Yakovich, and Gnome has, to this date, had the most FBI incidents in the last 50 years. And then the director's like, hi, I'm the director, and also, blah, 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 blah. And they talk about shit, and yes, and then we get a whole bunch of, the names were changed to protect the innocent, and... um on and on and on. Uh, the uh, actual folk from that <clears throat> town in Alaska were actually a bit annoyed by this, because there was a spate of missing people and they felt it made it not so important, you know. What I do didn't like was the final line that said, which is really cheesy, which is, uh, what you believe is your truth to decide. Mm. It's a little bit cheesy. But then what's exciting and amazing and fun is over the end credits, whether they're real or not, over the entire end credits, we just get non-stop 911 recordings of people reporting seeing UFOs over the last 20 years, which is really interesting. Um, and, and again, whether they're real or not, I don't know if they are, but it's just interesting to hear these people go, I don't know what the hell this is, but I think I'm I think I'm reporting a UFO. Uh, the, the there's something is, in the sky. That, that's kind of cool, but it's too late. It's like me saying that people don't believe footage nowadays because you can say CGI. Because we know it's fake, it kind of just makes it a little bit... Uh, do you know what I mean? I do. I, so, so you're that's sorry. the fourth kind. I'm sorry, Dan. I feel bad. Don't be sorry. I didn't. I didn't like it like you like it. I'm afraid. That's all right. No, no. I uh, I understand why. It's a, it's a really I think it's a um, product of its time. That's the product. It's thing. a very tricky movie to it is, describe it is. because it tries to be a lot of things. It tries it to be found footage. It tries to be a mockumentary. It tries to be um, X Files. But also, 
I don't know. It's, it's a difficult one. They do this split screen stuff in it, but it is for me overall. What still gets me is it's genuinely creeping. It does get under my skin. I'm a sucker for a tape recording with an ancient language on it that shouldn't be there, and those scenes really get to me. As long with the scenes of the owls, um, so overall, I, I'm a fan of the fourth kind, and also you know, Alien Productions, man. What can you say? I love the whole spin on it is at the end. I think Bo as well, Big Boss Bo that we discussed earlier, he mentioned that although the movie isn't awesome, he loved the ending because it's quite a bleak ending, which is basically whether whether she made it all up or not, she basically is in a wheelchair and completely insane from everything she's gone through. So it's a very bleak ending. Mm. Bo loves a bleak ending, I think. Um, but yeah, overall, I'm personally going to jump in and say that I still give this a thumbs up. I still They'll dig this movie. Don't worry, I thought um, you said that in an African accent, then, because African bow, bow likes a bleak movie. Bleak. No, bleak. not black. Yeah, I know, that's not a lethal weapon game. Bleak lives matter. Yeah. Um, <laughs> right. Okay, well... What do you I, give it? I, well, this movie... Uh, well, you heard my opinion, so... I'm not going to... I, I no give thumbs it, up from you, then. I'm going to give it a thumbs down. Are no you thumbs up, are you? I'm a thumbs up, for sure. I'm, I'm a thumbs, thumbs up the bottom, this, like I'm a little afraid. probe. Sure. And um, the next movie, Fire in the Sky, I do quite like. Um, I, I found it a little slow, um, but that's fine. Um, but I enjoyed it more than this movie. Um, but can we? Did you get an MOT on the time machine? Because I had no. a letter saying, well, I have a letter saying that you need a no MOT, and we might get intergalactic time traveling policemen stop us. Ah, uh, fuck that! They're fuck, not going to catch us. Fuck the cops. Okay, then. Fuck the police. Coming straight from under the ground. Coming so, straight from the time tunnel. A young brother had it bad because I yeah. drink for a funnel. Yeah. Let's get in the time machine. You ready for this? Yeah. <clears throat> Whoa! What's this machine? This is my time machine. Your man. time machine? Yeah. For the next five minutes, we are going to be... The Time Team! The Time Team! Whoa! What's this? Look at that! Look at that! Oh, he's been dead a hundred years! Look at that! Look at that! That's the Statue of Liberty coming out of the sand! Whoa! There's a dinosaur! Oh my god, look at that! It's something else! <laughs> Whoa! Here we are! Time Team! <laughs> time team time to take out the team no that's not right no we're here though we are and we are in the year 1994 yes Gav we are approaching the mid how time. old are we both well at this point I am 16 now so I am a young so, man so I'm 17 we are young men we are Allowed to smoke cigarettes. Not I was that you can at now. I was at sixth form college, sitting in art class, watching my friend skate by the window. And me going, "Oh, come on, time so we can I can go skating." Because oh, I yep. just skated, didn't care about nothing but skateboarding. We were legally allowed to have sexual intercourse at this point as well. Yeah. I was. You, you had been for a year. Yeah, it still didn't happen for a couple more years. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't happen until I was 41. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, when we get to the time team, yeah, I'll say, lost my virginity. It's, oh, it, uh, it's 2003. Uh, I wasn't, I was uh, not, I wasn't doing that thing, man. I was, um, I literally just out on my skateboard all the time. I just didn't do it. I went to like crazy parties, but. I will not skate, be revealing man. that to our listeners. Something's in my business. And the fact that I lost my virginity and I was 12 to a nun. I, oh, shit, I've said it now. Bollocks. Oh, well. Listen, we're here. It's 1994. Let's talk about what happened. Before we get into horror, because we come here for the horror and the hip-hop, what happened in 1994? Well, we talked about this a couple of episodes back, but it officially opened this year. 1994, the Channel Tunnel officially oh. opened. So it was exciting. You could go all the way to France on a train from England. And have that you is done mental. it, sir? I've never fucking done it. Uh, I have done it, yes. <laughs> Yeah, it's really cool. It's cool that you can do it. It goes underground all the way. You can take and... your car on it. Yeah. I think you can take your car yeah. on it. I might be wrong. I'm pretty sure you can. can so you? that was quite a big thing for the UK. Um, you can take your car on it, yeah. Another big thing that happened for the UK in 1994 was something kicked off where you could pay £1 every Saturday and you could oh, play the lottery. the lottery. 
Yeah. You could play the Suckers Lottery. Yeah, so it then turned into every Wednesday and Saturday. It then turned it into did. every Wednesday and Saturday, but then every Friday with the Euros. And now there's scratch cards and all sorts of shit. And everybody now in the UK is addicted to gambling. Yay! Yay! We're all alcoholics and gamblers. Brilliant. Um, the, the lottery kicked off in 94. I believe it was about 98. My mum and dad won about 600 quid on the lottery. And that was brilliant because they took me and my then girlfriend and a bunch of us out for a big meal. And they said, order absolutely anything you want. And we literally rinsed. 600 quid off of the menu uh, from drinking booze uh, and food from this place that we went to. And it's a brilliant night. So there we go. That's the biggest lottery win I know. Um, I've got to say that I've actually, uh, I'm not dissing it uh, uh, totally though. Um, some of the money uh, you get from lottery, they're quite good at their funding, national lottery funding. Um, I've, I've, I've been paid from projects I've done before working with children, Whoa, uh, troubled yeah. kids, um, <laughs> which that's been funded by national lottery money. So, and as we're talking about you know, movies, they do fund a lot of movies as well, don't they? The the UK National Lottery. So there is a lot that they do, actually. So. Yeah, yeah, there is that other side of it. So it, in some ways, it's quite good. It's not just some criminal organisation. At the same time, though, you are just gambling. And, it, you know. Well, talking of criminals, Gav, we've got some criminals to talk about in 1994. Smooth criminal. Did you ever heard of uh, Fred and Rose West? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're smooth criminals, aren't they? 1994. They had their house raided. And it was revealed they had at least... They killed at least Patio. 12 people. On the old They were buried all around their house and garden. That was insane. But Fred claimed that they killed a lot more than that. Everybody knows the story of Fred and Rose West, I'm sure. Uh, you might even be covering that on your other podcast at some point. But that... That's a, a very interesting story. And it happened not far from me, actually, in yeah. Gloucester, yeah, uh, which is quite very near where I live in Bristol. So Fred and Rose so happened. Is, Other so criminals. The house was, house was raided in 94. Okay, cool, yeah. Yeah, and you know what they found in his bathroom, don't you? What? Head and shoulders. That's... <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's talk about another criminal. We saw this on TV. Everyone was watching it. A white Ford Bronco s- s- smashing along the motorway, driving as fast as it could, being pl- chased by oh, police. OJ? A- OJ Simpson? What have you done? Nice. He didn't do it, did he? Because the glove didn't fit, so he must have quit, apparently. Bollocks. He cut them up to fucking sh- ribbons. I went to the Absolute house. Absolute nonsense. I went to the You've house. You've been to that house? Yeah. I went to the house, I had a little look. Did that. you find any evidence? <laughs> no. Detective Gav. What's funny Dick is, Gav. and it's not funny, no. but what's interesting is, you know, he's such a an icon at one point, and he even started appearing in, like, the uh, Naked no. Gun movies. Yeah, he is, he is cool, yeah. And, and, and uh, uh, when you look back, you know, obviously, you know this, I know you do, but some of our listeners may not. He even auditioned for the role of the Terminator. Um it was him, Lance Henriksen, and Arnold Schwarzenegger that were up for the role of the Terminator. And can you imagine if they'd cast him as the Terminator, and then years later he'd actually terminated a couple of people? It's, it's just insane. It's a quite a ballsy move to put Schwarzenegger as the role. You can see Lance Henriksen as being, you know, he's in Bishop in Aliens. You know, you can see him as an alien as an like, android, uh, uh, android yeah. yeah sorry not alien and uh schwarzenegger's quite a fucking ridiculousness because it's almost like that's too ridiculous to make the perfect man do you know what but I, mean? I mean he worked though didn't he he worked but yeah it, it, does, so it, well. it does it does <clears> work <throat> absolutely but that is quite weird actually when you think of others. but it could have been mr simpson yeah oh, OJ. oj yeah i know you can't didn't uh, say oj i often threw you then didn't i Homer Simpson. It's Mr. Homer, <laughs> si- Homer Simpson's playing in the Terminator. That'd be weird. Um, tragic. This year as well, a an F1 racing driver at the young age of nine of thirty four, Ayrton Senna, was killed, uh, very tragically and live on television um, when his car smashed into a wall, um, crushed his head into pieces and. You know, but if you're if you're churning a car around that fast, it, these things might happen. They've changed some of the rules now with F1 because of that, I believe. Um, so yeah, another tragedy this year. Yep, we've talked we talked about grunge quite a lot. Well, grunge oh, said goodbye oh, this year. Mr. Cobain. Yeah, Mr. Cobain kissed kissed the end of a gun this year, unfortunately. And whether you believe theories or not, he's still dead. 
um, you know, whether you believe that it was yeah, a there's setup, documentaries, but all sorts on that, isn't there? It's, it's very interesting. It's, it's, it's going to be one of those. There is because you get a couple of uh, sort of things here and there, but it's all oh, the conspiracy nuts going to love that stuff. Just goes to show how big an icon he was, though, because only icons get conspiracies around the death. People like Bruce Lee and Elvis and stuff like that, yeah, they yeah. get conspiracies. Around them. And Kurt Cobain definitely is an icon. So, Very true. yeah, we say goodbye to him in 1994 as well. Um, another weird and wonderful thing happened in 1994. Do you know, do you know where you were when Kurt Cobain died? I do. No, I, I didn't When you found do, out, no. obviously, when you found out. Um, I, was, I was down at the train station in the back car park skating, and someone told me. Of course you were. Uh, another weird and wonderful and quite strange thing happened in 1994, which is Michael Jackson got married to Elvis Presley's daughter. Michael Jackson did basically a McCann and just literally like the press do of the McCann that's been the McCann story out. So you look the other way. Yeah? I've been accused of child abuse. Quickly, I'm going to marry Elvis Presley's daughter and make you all think something else. Yeah. Very yeah. strange arrangement. It's... It, yeah, but of it, I, you can understand how maybe some if if it, you know because I know you have a certain stance on it, and I'm kind of on the fence, and but there's no proof, and you know we might have listeners who do not believe in such a way as you do about such matters, but um, <laughs> it is quite a weird weird thing to have like this this fake marriage go on to say like look we need to make you look more normal. What about making me war white? No, 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 that won't make you normal. Let's get you a wife. Can she be white? Mm, okay, we'll go that far. Then I'm going to be white. No, 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 no. Can can it be Elvis Presley's daughter? Can it make it even make it even more crazy? And it's Presley's daughter, <laughs> the king of a king of rock and roll. Can we do that? Okay, we can try that. Wow. Wow. It's mad, isn't it? It's insane. It's mad. Mm. And I remember the interview um, with Oprah Winfrey. She interviewed them. It was a very famous bit of television. And it was just one of the weirdest interviews because he's wearing these very strange, shiny army clothes. And she sat next to him. And Oprah's like, so what is it that attracted you to Michael? And he's like, she's like, he's a beautiful man. You know, he he speaks from his heart and his soul. And I'm thinking, what the, who's fucking written this shit for you to say? It's I know. so it's, weird. It's, yeah. it's so weird. Like the, the movie Jay and I watched last night, at the end it had all the uh, <clears throat> young kid actors in it and they had condoms full of water thrown at their face and it's in slow motion while the credits are over the top. Kind of like, you know, your end of the film thing. And two of the people look like Michael Jackson when the water first went on their face cause it makes the face kind of explode a bit. <clears throat> both, both me and Jay both went, Michael Jackson! It was so weird. Watch that movie and check it out at the end. Really, really weird. Anyway, that's, that's pretty weird. What tangent. was that movie again? Uh, Book Smart. Book Smart, okay. Michael Jackson's in that. Um, the only in people's other thing faces, really... if water, condom water balloons being sp- on their faces, it's like seeing God. It's, you just see glimpses of Michael Jackson on their faces. <laughs> the only other thing to mention before we start talking about pop culture and music is. There was one little bit of uh, pop culture that children were into so much. And this was the number one really selling toy of 1994 as well. And you could buy costumes, toys, vehicles, books. But they were everywhere. And I am talking about Go Go Power Rangers. Oh, really? I, I had no idea what, what you were going to say. It's, like, it's just going through my memory. Like, hey, man, no, that's 80s. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, really? the Power Rangers really kicked off here in Did 1994. Did you see that movie which came out of, like three years ago? Power which Rangers, movie was Power that? Rangers movie. It's more legit. It's so. more of like oh, a legit. Oh, you mean one. you mean the ten minute sort of pretend one no, that no, had no, James no, Van no, no, no proper film. It's Power oh, Rangers that movie. movie. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, that was all right. I didn't that mind was okay. it. Yeah, yeah, I didn't mind it. I watched it with the kids. I'm a big fan of Power Rangers. I'm actually currently. <clears throat> Revelation. I I'm don't think anything, watching, uh, anyone's going to be surprised that you're a great big fan of Power Rangers, Dan, to be honest I'm, with you. You know, I was 16 when it came out. I was probably a bit too old for it. My brother, was, who's eight years younger than me, was well into it. And I was playing with toys with him. I'd go and like, look after him and play with the toys with him. And it was on TV. So it's on Netflix now, like every episode. So most mornings I'll start my day off while I'm reading the news with a, an episode of Power Rangers on in the background. Did just you? working my way through the ball. Yeah, I mean, that's what I'm watching at the moment. So, i got to say, uh, I, think, I think we should do, like, uh, this could be a perk for uh, uh, people who want to be on Patreon and follow us. <clears throat> They get to spend 24 hours just following you around your room 
around your house and just watching what you do. I don't think that would be fascinating. It'd be like at the zoo. In, in, the only, in, in, in the a only nice reason way. I do it, the only reason I do it is because I like to start my day with something that's comfortable and nice. And I did start doing that with, like, for example, I watched all of the Fresh Prince episodes and I'd watch one or two every morning. Then I went into Friends and, I, and they're all on Netflix. So I watched every episode of that over a few months in the morning while I was getting ready for work or watch reading the news with a coffee and now the next 90s thing really for me is Power Rangers so I'm, I'm working my way through those I'm having I'm having fun with it it's silly nonsense it's got martial arts and aliens and creatures in it I love it Power Rangers man it's so funny that you, you like to start your day with a little thing it's very sweet Dan very sweet yeah I, I tell I my brother about get it get up like, and go oh, and get on my day but I like yeah, that I, I like to ease myself into it, the it's day it's like what Agent Cooper says into him, Pete, go treat yourself every day. Just treat yourself. That's I your little treat. I, I do. I think that's good. <clears throat> good shape. <clears throat> so that was the uh, Power Rangers. And obviously that was big on TV at the time. Let's move into it then. So other popular TV in the in uh, 1994. The X-Files was all the rage. It was on its um, whatever season it was on I by now. I really enjoyed watching that the other night again. I was just sitting there going, so, quite like the X-Files. We just thought sat there watching it. Was, oh, it's a good show. Like the early it's ones. Quite, uh, the old ones. 94, we, we had some quite original TV, you know, that we were watching. Stuff that, although it had been going for a couple of years, some of these shows, they were quite uh, unique. So X-Files, um, Star Trek Deep Space Nine. NYPD Blue, Power Rangers, Fraser, Beavis and Butthead. Uh, in the UK, you had Absolutely Fabulous, One Foot in the Grave. Um, oh, also, oh, the Ren and Stimpy the show, the Jerry Springer show. And also, one, foot, one show that was really becoming quite popular at this point was MTV's Beavis and Butthead. And we talked about them just now, and that's weird. Mm. Um, Beavis and Butthead was a big thing in 94 as well. So that was your TV. You compared us to Beavis and Butthead. That's what you did. Give you my bum hole. Bum hole. Give me my bum hole. Bum hole. Uh, let's get into some music, shall we? Yeah. Uh, before we get into the hip hop button, hippie, hippie I'm, a, okay, cool. I'm about to press the hip hop button. But before we get into that, um, popular artist '94, just to put you in that mindset: Brian Adams, Cheryl Crow. All I wanna do is have some fun. Uh. What was the Bon Adam um, song? Uh, I don't know. He he was just popular at this point. Okay. Um, bon Jovi, Aerosmith, uh, Janet Jackson, Snoop Dogg. Oh, might give it something away there. Uh, Boys to Men. Um, and Celine Dion. We'd had that bloody Power of Love song out. So that was your music. Let's let me press the hip hop button. Hang on. Press it. Push it. Push it real good. Right, we're in it. We're in the hip hop. So this year for hip hop, nineteen ninety four. What a fucking year, Gavin. I really hope everyone cares about our little, little trips down memory lane. But go on, then. Go uh, on. I'm a, a, young chap, a young chap called Nazir Jones, Nasty a.k.a. Nazir. 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 Oh. Probably one of the greatest um, debut hip-hop albums of all time. Uh, someone on Twitter, only yesterday, put, like, said, like, uh, what's a, what's an album which has every song the bang it <clears throat> and all these people put on their, fit, their titles and one person said do you notice most of it's white people and stuff and I didn't bother because I can't bother getting involved with it but I was going to put that album it's it's incredible <coughs> it's an incredible album it's a really good album and I love that it, it, there's a documentary behind the making of that album yeah, I've seen which, it I've seen it because so you know, you he, he demanded the best producers for every song and why well, not just, you know he, go for he, it basically please. he was like this kid that just um, just kind of appeared in New York <clears throat> and um, he went in with all these amazing hip hop producers at the time and it was still are and went in and just would r do his rap like in one take or whatever and be like yeah and be like what the fuck? Like, this guy isn't, you know, and he's an incredible rapper. He really is. I think he, I, I prefer him. He's more of a king of New York to me compared to, um, Jay Z, you're going to say. Jay Z. I fucking hate Jay Z. Oh, I don't mind Jay Z, but yeah. Uh, hey, Nas, it's a horrible word. I dislike Nas is, Jay Z. Nas is much better. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Notorious B.I.G. also dropped Ready to Die this year as well. Nice, um, nice. It's an alright album. You know, it's not anything, uh, compared to some of his other stuff, but it's, it's an alright album. Um, we mentioned the young chap earlier. Uh, well, I did anyway, off air to you. Warren G dropped his first album Breaking this year. Late. Breaking it late. What? G Funk Era. What a fucking album that was as well. Yeah. Holy shit. That I probably have listened to that album close to two or three hundred times in my life already. Uh, and I'm only 42. So we'll continue to listen to it. I absolutely love that album. Redman dropped his album There Is A Dark Side you know Redman's yep. a fantastic MC but mm -hmm. that, that is what it is we also had 
a little bit of horrorcore come out in 1994, or hip horrorcore. Grave diggers. Grave diggers, six feet deep. Um, it's got another title which I won't say, but uh, yeah, six feet deep, and it's a great album, and it's a very scary horror-driven album. Actually, something that me as a horror fan, and I'm sure you, Gav, would have really been into yeah, yeah, they, yeah. the concept, what I they was. talk about. I was. There's a song on there called um, "1 800 Suicide," where they discuss different ways to kill yourself and the horrific elements around it. It's I, just a great. It, it was all right. I wasn't totally into it, but um, uh, most of it was all right. Method Man dropped his solo album. No, it's a good, good album. Tickow. Tickow. What the Great shit album. you be smoking? Tickow. Tickow. Great album. And very different to anything the Wu-Tang Clan did before. Yeah, this nice. is, I love this now because we're so passionate about hip-hop. Yeah. We get to like flex our hip-hop. I know. And everybody's, just like, everybody's just like pressing the 30-second <laughs> forwards on their apps. Uh, also... If you want to keep it, uh, keep it to the white boys, we've got the Ill Communication from the Beastie Boys drop this year as well. Yeah, great album. album. Yeah. It's a great album. Not one of the best albums check, that check they did. Check your heads. Like, the, the yeah, it's all right. It's to uh, Coolio dropped his album. It Takes, it a, takes thief. a Thief. Nice. Yeah, and he, uh, good album. he was doing... You know, he was doing some good stuff this year. He uh, dropped. Yeah, it used to be my Gangster's cooking album. Paradise. I used to cook to that album all the time. It's a really good album. I love the fact that one point one songs he's just rapping about how he, he breaks into people's houses. It, it is a good album, and Kudia was fantastic. To get money for drugs, like get money for crack, or whatever. It's just like what the fuck, yeah. Um, the Fugees dropped their uh, the debut score. album this year. No, no, no. Uh, Blunted on Reality. The oh, score okay. was their Scores second later. album. Okay. Yeah. It's Blunted on Reality is an underrated gem, in my opinion. It's got some fantastic I, songs I on it. It's one. very rough around the edges. Craig Mack also dropped his Flaving debut album. Uh, well, the album is called Funk the World. But yeah, the, the song. Flaving Years is any good Flavin song he's done. And then, do you, he know what, do you know what he's up to nowadays? He got all religious. He died. No, he didn't. Is he, he, did, he died, he oh, died before, about a year ago. That's two years right. Ago. Before that, though, he got went really religious. He did. Joined a little, joined a little uh, church. I think it's predominantly white people in his church as well. Quite strange. Well, talking of white people, House of Pain. <laughs> I thought we say young black teenagers. That's the House weirdest hip hop group. Young black teenagers, and most of them are white. That's the weirdest group. It is Tap weird. the bowl. That's a good song. YBT. Though. Yeah, YBT. Uh, same as it ever was, which is the second album by House of Pain dropped in 1994. And I'm a big fan of that, that album. I don't know why. I just am. Um, Danny it's Boy's a fun album. Shits. Danny Boy's got the shits. That should be so. Should be one of their songs. That should be a t-shirt. Uh, other albums that came out this year. Um, we also had. Ah, I think actually. I'm sure there was one other really good one. We had a Public Enemy album, but but it wasn't that great. No, no, that was it. That was the dope albums that were out this year. Cool, man. That was cool. I think last yeah, year but, might uh, be more. Oh no, this year's a big banger. This year's good. Yeah. The trouble is, Gav, all of the early nineties are going to be bangers. So I know, I you know. know. I know. There's probably a few I've missed off, but not worth mentioning. But yeah, ton of ton of albums. But those are the, some of the best hip hop albums. So let's swing it back now to uh, horror movies. Yeah. Well, before we get into horror, as always, I'll touch on the. Um, <clears throat> I'll touch on the other movies. Shawshank. Redemption. So this this gives you an idea. I always like to give you an idea of what the cinema feels like it, this year. Basically, it's your it's your gauge. You're going if this is your flat line. Baseline. So it's your baseline. Think of the think of these movies. Yep. Shawshank Redemption. Incredible. Forrest Gump. Pretty good. The original Lion King. Mm-hmm. True Lies. I only seen it once actually. The Flintstones movie. Have you seen that once? Dumb and Dumber. Pretty good. Speed. I only seen it once. What was the I mask. doing in '94? Mask. Yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah. Pulp fucking fiction. Oh, too good. Four weddings and a funeral. Yeah. And then everyone was talking about Muriel's wedding and that that movie that came out. Yeah. We also had Miracle on 34th Street for you Christmas guys and the Santa Claus. So. A real range of movies there, you know, some sci-fi, some yeah. animated. I thought some it was going to be when you started off with Shawshank. I was like, oh my god, what is this level going to be? And it's like, it didn't, it didn't keep at that level. I've got to... Well, let's go into horror then because it's an interesting year for horror. We had a real mix of some really um, 
quite classy stuff, but and then there's some stuff that's a bit weird as well. So we had um, Wes Craven's A New Nightmare dropped in 1994. So Freddy got real on your ass. He became a real character, and the actors played themselves. And I think, I mean, we've discussed before, that's the start of Scream, isn't it, really? Yeah, um, I don't that, know that, that movie. Like blueprint I got, for Scream. I, got to admit, I don't know that movie very well. I do think I've seen it, and I thought it was a bit too long, but I, I don't know. But I saw that l- this side of, say, five years, you know what I mean? I didn't see it back in the day. I kind of skipped it for whatever reason. Never been a massive really, Elm Street fan, to be honest with really you. Really decent movie for me that one uh nightmare new nightmare we also got jack nicholson as a wolf yeah um and we also got robert de niro as a frankenstein monster in mary shelley's frankenstein i've not seen him you are i i don't i'm not really a a, a frankenstein story excuse me i've not seen it if you wanted to we could cover it uh, because like I've to. not seen it, so I'm going in blind. So. You know that I'm a big Frankenstein fan. Yeah. Um, Phantasm Three, Lord of the Dead. We've covered that. It's crazy. We did it's the whole the... four, uh, five, five. five. Yeah. yeah. Puppet Master Five dropped this year, as did Jesus. Leprechaun Two. Oh, baby. <laughs> and we're doing we're doing that next year. Leprechaun Two and Three for Easter next year. That's incredible. In the Mouth of Madness was 1994 as well. At some point, I want Warwick on the show, though, to do one with us. We'll get him on here. I'm sure he can come on at such short notice. Brilliant. In the, he's he's <laughs> definitely coming on now. In the Yeah, because he'll, he'll tell me a new one for saying that. Uh, in the Mouth of Madness. Do you like that? Oh, yeah. Of course. John Compton and Sam Neill. It's incredible. Good. Cemetery Man. Now, we covered that for our very first ever valentine's episode really good movie cemetery man love that great norks mate great norks well interview with the vampire talking of a couple of tits brad pitt and uh, tom cruise were in uh, interview with the vampire decent movie though man i like that don't really remember it okay the crow we've covered that we've and that covered is a that. great movie i'm great actually movie. remembering tonight some of the films you've covered yeah yeah also a really underrated movie which people don't seem to talk about a lot Peter Jackson's Heavenly Creatures came in 1994 as well. Oh, the uh, uh, the dawning of Kate Winslet. Yeah. Um, he found a, a, a school really... in Reading, which is not far from me, where she was at school. And uh, uh, one of the teachers, I think a drama teacher, said, she's quite a good one. And uh, he went to school and said, yeah, you do. And boom, she, off she is away to be a film star. It's a very underrated, creepy, strange murder teen drama. It's, it's based on real story too. Yeah, it is. And I love the whole weird side story with the actual um, sculptures that come to life. Uh, And that's kind of where he went, really. From there, he went into the Frighteners and then, of course, Lord of the Rings with with all the stuff he he did. So you can really see his progression from brain. It's weird that he went from bad Bad taste, taste. brain dead, heavenly creatures. I want him to do like a bad taste again one day, just be like a couple of mates with a camcorder. And I watched. I mean? I'd love him to do that, and it, you, you could um, almost, almost expect, uh, not expect, almost wouldn't be hard to imagine him just being one day like, "Yep, I've decided I'm going to make bad taste too with some mates with a camcorder, just filming New Zealand." You could almost imagine that. You could. He's, that, like he's, he's a passionate a filmmaker. He's not out for making. He is money. passionate. Yeah. I feel like he peaked a bit. I think King Kong was terrible, in my opinion. Um, and then, and then I was talking to RJ about this on his show. I. I absolutely love Tintin, which was obviously really a joint good. effort Spielberg. between him and Spielberg. And and I watched it again uh, a few weeks ago, which is why RJ and I were talking about it. And it really captured that childhood adventure which, excitement. Which they both have, him and Spielberg. Yeah. The perfect, they're really, perfect yeah, teaming he, up. And they're supposed to like do it again, the next one, and swap roles. Oh, I'd love to see that. I'm a, so well, that would been, a huge that, Peter Jackson fan. So. Peter directing and Stephen, because we're on first names, me and, me and those guys. Of course. Stephen producing. He, Pete oh, and Steve. Steve, Pete and Steve, directing and producing. Pete and Steve. <laughs> Peter, Jack- Peter, Peter Jackson. It totally changes it, doesn't he? Oh, Pete, I love Pete and Steve's movies. They are great. Yeah. It makes them feel like you're yeah, but that sounds like you're inviting your rank to watch um, a, a gay couple that you know. Pete and Steve. Some dodgy movies and of themselves, and you're like, <laughs> I love Do you Pete want and to Steve's watch some movies. Pete and Steve movies, and I'm like, okay, what? 
what, it's what not the Pete and Steve not? that from last time, is it? No, that's a different Pete and Steve. <laughs> oh, there we go. Uh, the only other movie to mention. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> is Ghoulies Four. Ghoulies Four. That's the one after they've been to college. It's the fourth oh, one. No, wow. These fucking films. But they in space by now. No, they never even they were so shit they never even went to space that's that's a bad that's another low isn't it you can't be you're so shit you don't get to space only Jason and the leprechaun went to space he, unfortunately Machete never got to space either and he was supposed to sorry well, the second sorry one Danny was absolute dog shit. the second one let me tell you a story about watching it listeners I know you love us doing a tangent when I went that to watch the second one was Machete, mental wasn't it is that Ron Charlie Sheen in it is he in uh, it and Steve Seagal as well oh, I think no, Super Seagal's uh, in the first one. So, I'm not going to mention the person's name obvious, for obvious reasons. Let me just take a swig of wine, because this is quite a big, weird story. Is, it, is this one of the actors you talk about, or the person you went to see the film with? I went to watch the film on my own, Machete Kills, and then I got a Wait, phone call from cinema? Some... It was played at cinema? Yeah. Wow. That and then got I got a, a message. Screening. Wow. And I got a message from someone saying, Oh, I'd love to come and watch that can I come and meet you? And I said, well, I'm already here in the back row on my own. There's like three other people in, in here. So this, this gentleman came to meet me. So he sat next to me in the cinema. Is, <clears> did you know <throat> this person? Or he's not going to start yeah, tugging yeah, you off, is he? Right, no, there's a guy okay. I worked with. I'm in the back. There's no one here. Come and tug me off. No, I mean, that would have been much better than what's about to happen. So, um, what is going to happen? <laughs> so I'm watching Machete kills. Oh, yeah. And I'm thinking, why does this guy next to me keep leaning down? And I can hear some weird sounds and rustling. Then I got this weird aroma, like, hit me in the face. And then it, like, a bit of the dust or something. And then I realised he is gobbling up a bag of ketamine while he's watching this in the cinema next to me. That's not the movie you take a, a tranquilizer to, surely. A horse tranquilizer. So when we came out of the cinema, I was I was really annoyed that he'd been doing it because it really put me off trying to watch this film. And it was a <laughs> terrible film anyway. When I came out, I said, what do you think of that then? And he went... Eh. And he couldn't even string a sentence together. And I thought, yeah, fucking, of course you can't. So that's my experience of watching that film with a man gobbling up ketamine next to me. I don't know why he did it. Ketamine fans, don't go to the cinema to meet Dan. He won't appreciate it. Please don't. If you're going to do anything, bring me some crack. I thought it was going to be coke, but ketamine's a little bit out there, isn't it? It is. It's a big, it's a big problem in Bristol, apparently. I think Machete's more of a coke movie when you get down to it. I don't think it's a ketamine movie. Yeah, I think so. Um, well, there we go. That's horror. Not an awful lot to take away, Gav. Again, Fucks up your as bladder. We, it? As okay, we, it does, it does. As we work our way through the 90s, as we've discussed, it is hard going. I would say the takeaways from 1994 would be uh, probably The Crow, Cemetery Man, uh, Interview with the Vampire, and then I'd probably throw in A New Nightmare and a Wolf as well. I wouldn't bother with anything else. You like In the Mouth of Madness? I'm not a huge fan of that, but it is a good film. Ooh, but... a big, I'm a big fan of Mouth of Madness. So that's so funny that we have these similar, uh, the differences, but we also have our similarities. There we go. Yes. So that's 1994. We've covered it. We've gone from Power Rangers to O.J. Simpson. We've gone on tangents about ketamine. We've looked at horror. We've looked at hip-hop. We've wrapped. We've talked about Nas. And now... It's time to get back in the machine. Oh, let's get back to some aliens, man. That's I can it. see some fire in the sky up there, so let's let's Good. do this. You ready for this? Hang let's on, go. let me just uh hang on. Oh, 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 oh. How does it think? What makes it move? Why does it breathe? Questions anyone would ask about a man if they'd never seen one before. So for five days, a man was borrowed. The story that Travis Walton and five other witnesses told was so unbelievable, so unimaginable, that it has become the most famous case of UFO abduction ever reported. Thank you. 
Fire in the Sky, 1993. An Arizona logger mysteriously disappears for five days in an alleged encounter with a flying saucer in 1975. His co-workers endure ridicule and contempt, <laughs> contempt as they are wrongly accused of murder. <laughs> Oh, listeners, the reason I'm laughing is because it took me three attempts to say fire in the sky because I kept saying fire in the scar. <laughs> kept saying fire in the scar. Fire in the scar. I don't know why. It's interesting. Oh, dude, please help me. Okay, Don't so talk this about this movie, film. As we know, this movie is allegedly based on a real-life encounter. It's uh, directed by Robert Lieberman which is a very good name to say in, in a German accent. Lieberman! And he went on to direct um, just loads of TV, really. Uh, I think he did some um, Buffy and a few other bits and bobs, but he hasn't really done many, it's, it's, many movies. It's, really. Well, it's mainly sort of sci-fi stuff he's done. There's one called Fall, Fallen Skies, uh, yeah. which looks kind of like a uh, kind of species type of film. Eve of Destruction, that's kind of like something you'd watch with fucking sharks and dinosaurs wandering around in it. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, no, but this, this movie, I always remember, I got this movie, for some reason I feel like it's like on Sky One. Sky One would occasionally show movies, yeah? Because obviously Sky Movies was a movie channel. But Sky One would occasionally, like, Sunday night play a movie or something. And, um, I feel like this was, uh, this kind of felt like a TV movie. Do you know what I mean? It didn't feel at the time like something you saw in a cinema. Well, I saw this relatively early, personally. Um, <clears throat> what I liked about it was I was probably, I watched this probably, it was 93 it came out, and I probably saw it in the 98, 99, maybe even 2000, when I was watching the X-Files and stuff. But also, what this movie did for me, and, and it's interesting that the director has done mostly TV, this movie also really reminds me of like an extended episode from the X-Files, or even has a lot of, Twin Peaks elements to it because of the small town vibe. Um, so I remember, I just remember it from back then and didn't see it again until about five years ago. Watched it and thought, wow, how have I forgotten about this, I, this movie? Really? I didn't see it again until watching it for this. I like the fact it had James Garner in it. I didn't even sort of really remember it. James Garner's in it looking a bit. James old. Garner, isn't it? Yeah. You know, James Garner? He's in The Great Escape. <clears throat> Fucking you know, hell, I didn't even know he was in this. He was the, yeah, he was the, um, he was in Space Cowboys. You know, he was the investigator, the out-of-town investigator come to... Bloody check. hell. That's, do you know, straight away as soon as I was like, oh my God, that's James Garner. He did, do you not? He's no, older, he's older, away he's, by, older. he's um, got a cowboy hat on. He's, a, he's an older yeah, gentleman. I mean, he's, he's the sheriff, but... Um, okay, the, that no, he's not the sheriff, he's not the sheriff, he's the investigator. Well, that completely tight. Wow, you just blow my mind. All I was, I was just most excited about seeing Robert Patrick and Henry Thomas from ET in this. I so. thought, and I thought James Garner's great as that kind of cowboy hat wearing, suit wearing, like investigator out of town coming not to believe the kids. I thought he played that really like it's a perfect role for him. It's nice to see. He him. would, he would be, he's similar his character to the character in. From Dust Till Dawn, the sheriff that gets killed in the very beginning. Yeah, yeah. That kind of character that's always yeah, totally. sort of... Or, or your Tommy Lee Jones type character. Oh, Tommy fucking Lee Jones, that, that guy. That's no guy. Country for Old Man type tip, you know. This, Watched um... that again the other day, actually, that was a good movie. Yeah, so did I. Very good. Um, this is based on a book called The Walton Experiment. Experience? Experiment. Okay. Um, well, is it experience then? Are you saying it's experience? I thought it was the Walton experience. Let's 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 both be right. I'm gonna at the end of this. I'm gonna read out a, just a very short summary of what this movie is based on. The real story that this Why? movie is based. On. Uh, um, okay. Would you want me to do it now? I was gonna say do that now. All right, let's do it now. That's fine. So this is a this is a very famous case of a, alien abduction. Uh, so this movie portrays um, a skewed, dramatised version of this, let's say. So in the real account, in the real sort of explanation of what happened, Travis Walton said 
he was struck by lightning and he woke up on a table surrounded by three beings or aliens and he said they had bold heads with dis- disproportionately large heads that um, on tiny bodies. Uh, their heads were bulging. They were huge. They had a tiny mouth and a tiny jaw. They had an underdeveloped appearance to their features that seemed almost childlike. Um, they had thin-lipped mouths, very tiny little mouths, which never opened. Um, lying near their heads on either side were tiny little lobes that you seen to ears. They had little miniature rounded noses with oval nostrils. And the only, only facial feature that didn't appear underdeveloped were their eyes. Their eyes were very human looking. Um, the big brown irises, twice the size of a human's eyes. Um, and they were about an inch in diameter, almost a bit cat-like. There's very little of the white showing. They had no eyelashes or eyebrows. And according to Travis Walton, he leapt up from the table, uh, grabbed one of the instruments from a nearby table, uh, swung it as a weapon, swung it at one of the aliens. They all turned around and walked out of the room quickly. Um, He walked into a different room with a high-backed chair that looked like a throne. Uh, And he sat in the chair. He felt compelled to sit in the chair in the other room. Sit, sitting in the chair, uh, he saw a set of controls and he thought, well, maybe I'm, I'm in some kind of observatory or control room. Um, and suddenly, before he could press anything or do anything, a man in a blue suit with a glass helmet came down in through a doorway. And Walton said, who am I? Where am I? What's going on? Who are you? The man in the blue suit with the glass helmet didn't say anything. Um, he just got... <coughs> guided him um, out through a different doorway um, into a saucer-like object, into a hangar filled with other saucers, hundreds of saucers apparently, or dozens of saucers, down a hallway. Um, and he tried asking questions, you know, what what are you? What, where am I? What's happening? Why am I here? The man didn't answer any questions. He just sent him off. Um, he said, lie on the table here, lie on the table here. He laid on the table. And he saw another table either side of him. One had a woman on it with a mask placed over her face, a man on the other side with a mask placed over his face. He passed out, and then he woke up naked in the woods. Really? I didn't know all this. And that, this is uh, 75, isn't it, Arizona? 1975. LSD, baby. Wow. That, <laughs> this is the theory. LSD is the theory. Oh, really? Yeah, but we'll, we'll get into that. Okay. Um, That's one of the things about this. Well, we started talking about this as a movie. It's yeah. a it's a good story. It's an interesting story. It's a mystery, which I know you'll like, and that's why you probably like this because it's got that mystery element. Something happens. We get a little bit of investigation going on. Yeah, I I think at the time watching this film, I did find it a little slow and kind of going along a little bit. Um, I do like it more, and I think as we speak about it, I'm going to say it more because I like the big bit at the beginning with the um the whole point of these this group of guys in this bar um and them sort of being not interrogated but being asked questions by james gunn i like all that whole stuff it's quite nice of course it does have that kind of slight mystery element of what is actually going on um and it was originally seven people um but the producers deemed that a bit too much for the um average audience to take in and remember so they cut it to six yeah, I don't know why, but it works. It's fine. It works. I think actually, that, <clears throat> I, I thought about it more, and I was like, that actually makes sense. If it's five, you know, you kind of need another, and if it's six, that's good. If it's seven, it's probably a bit too much. So I can, I kind of understand that a bit. But they could have just made it seven to make it. What I would say realistic. about this movie? Uh, well, that thought... means one of those guys got stitched, didn't he? He's like, oh, why have I been left out? <laughs> what I'm, what I would say about this movie is it. You know, it's a movie based on a so so say true story. It is a very very well written script um, and very low budget, but they did a great amount with the budget they had. Everybody in this, I really feel like, really acted really really acted their socks off. You know, everybody was great in this, particularly the guy that plays Travis Walton and Robert Patrick. Um, he was phenomenal in it. Even Henry Thomas. You know, everybody in this was good. James Garner, etc. And when we get to the aliens later on, because when you first watch this movie, you probably don't expect to see the aliens and the effects are actually really good, I think. 
um, of the aliens. It's all very, obviously no CGI, it's 93, so it's all real practical stuff. Um, so I think this is, a, to me, this is a bit of a hidden gem. I think when we posted up, we were going to be reviewing this. And when we post, posted up, we we're watching this. There's a lot of buzz on the Facebook page because people that know, know. But I think if you've not seen this movie, you think, well, I don't really know. Is that any good? Watch it. And then you'll understand, OK, this is a bit of a hidden gem. I think there's a lot, a lot to this movie. And I think it's a really well this movie is very comfortable being a slow burn and letting this flow, this thread flow out and you just start to get into these characters and then they keep dropping bombs on you, whether it's somebody going up in a beam of white light and then showing up naked and then alien flashbacks. They, this movie loves dropping bombs on you all the way through. I think I would appreciate, I, I, I don't know if I can completely go with you if it's a hidden gem, not completely there. But I completely understand where you're coming from, though, with this film. It, it, it's got a very comfortable feeling to it. You could just put it on on a rainy day type film, yeah? It's it's kind of got a nice long sort of story. I think I'd have felt more comfortable if it was maybe a TV movie split into two parts. Do you know what I mean? I do, yeah, I yeah. I feel like it, that should be that because of that slow burners to it. Because it, what, it, what is it, like an hour and 50 minutes? Yeah, like hour and 40 or something. Maybe an hour, hour and 49. But um, I think this is a movie that teenagers, and I hate doing this, but I don't think, I think this is more for people that have a bit more patience. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. When I, when I watched it, I, I, I could get on board more of it now than when I first watched yeah. it, and I was a teenager. Yeah. And I agree with you. Sunday, cosy afternoon, you know, pop this one on. Yeah. Definitely. I, I definitely, would watch definitely. it again. At the time when I watched it, Sarah, we did kind of go, oh, it's pretty slow, maybe a little boring at places. But like, I think upon reflection of things about it the past couple of days, and I think speaking about it now with you, I think I'm going to be more come along with what, where you're coming from, you know. So we start off with a speeding pickup truck. Um, we don't know who's driving it or anything. We find out later that it's Robert Patrick driving it and his crew, his logging crew. But they're he's, speeding he's along. Like the, he's like the foreman, isn't he? He's the he's the boss. They call him the boss. Um, this truck is out of control. They're they're obviously driving away from something. We don't know what. And they crash into another truck. They're driving along. Um, the men pull up to a bar and they go into the local town bar and they they are in shock. Um, they all look. Like they've just come away from war. You know, they, they can barely string a sentence together. One of them says to Robert Patrick, as long as we stick to the story, that's fine. We've got to keep to this story. So you already know they've just gone through something pretty weird. We know this movie's about aliens. It's probably going to be to do with that. And uh, they say to Robert Patrick, okay, you're the boss. You call the cops. We'll all stick to the story. We'll make this work. And it's like, though, if you took the sci-fi element out of it, it's like it's uh, um, some real indie movie where they've plotted together to kill their mate and bury him. Do you know what I mean? It feels like yeah, a real yeah. gritty indie thriller from the 90s. Um that sort of thing, shallow grave or something like that. You I know? was going to say weirdly. I was going to say shallow grave, Gab. We are such the same brain, <laughs> but I, I do. I know what you mean. It's got that little element to it as well, definitely. Yeah, it does have that. Uh, um, yeah, carry on. Uh, so the sheriff um, arrives at the bar. He gets the phone calls, says, "You know, you need to come to the bar. There's some weird shit going on here." So the police all arrive. They check out the truck. They check out the pickup truck, and they've. They say to the sheriff, you need to hear this story, really, from the horse's mouth. And this is where James Garner turns up. And he is some kind of hotshot investigating cowboy who has been brought in because this story is just a little bit How do you, how do you get for... there so quick? Because right at the end of the movie, he says, when they slip up, I'll be there. And he says, what, all radio from here? And he says, I don't care if I'm over in... Blah, 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 blah. The North Pole. North Pole. I don't care. Um, <clears throat> yeah, what, what, where has he come from now? He must have been pretty close to come there at the bar while they're still sitting there waiting. They couldn't have waited for long. He must have been at least an hour away. So at least, like, say, within 100 miles radius. I have no idea. I'm just saying. <laughs> but what they do say is that their buddy, Travis Walton, a.k.a. Did you think he looked a lot like Paul Rudd? 
Uh, yeah. <laughs> Like he literally looked like kind of, uh, yeah, a kind slightly of wished older it Paul was Rudd. Paul Rudd, though. That's an oh. unfortunate thing, though. You would have been even more gutted if Paul Rudd went missing because he's like probably the nicest guy on the planet, isn't he? Yeah, him and Seth Rogen. Like, no, imagine, don't take them. Imagine if me, you, and Seth Rogen and Paul Rudd were buddies and we all went out. I imagine we'd probably all get along. I should imagine we would. I think you and Seth would get on a lot if you know what I'm saying. And me and me and Paul Rudd would just be talking absolute nonsense. You'd probably be taking the, the piss out of us, guys, to be Go honest Look at those two fucking idiots over there. Exactly. And we'd be doing stupid things. Ah, oh, I Put, want to be Paul Rudd. Putting suction dildos on each other's heads. We should just end the review there. So let's bring it back. So yes, they they say their friend Travis Walton is missing. Um, like and I this said, is this sketchy, is... though. If you were a chef, you'd be like, "You fuckers have fucking killed your mate and buried him in the woods." That's what yeah. you've done. They've they've all got this story. So to be fair, James Garner isn't like the asshole from the last movie. If you had that sheriff from that last movie, it'd have fucking had all of them down and fucking hands up their asses, searching everywhere. Well, they say to Robert Patrick, the T-1000, tell the story. And he says, have you seen this boy? No, sorry, that's a different film. He says, all right, here's the story. So he starts telling the story and he says, and it, we, we have a nice flashback now where we see Travis Walton, the guy that's gone missing. And he's on his motorbike and he rides up to Robert Patrick's house. And uh, he says, oh, hey, buddy, how you doing? They're like best mates. He says, look, I've been thinking about it. I want to open a motorcycle showroom with you where we sell motorcycles. It's a cute story. It's really, they're they're BFFs. It's all good. Also, we find out Travis is engaged to his sister. It's not his sister. It's his wife's sister. So it's his sister-in-law, yeah? Oh, it's Robert Patrick's sister-in-law. No, it's Robert Patrick's little sister. Oh, it's his little sister. So his best mate is getting married to his little sister. I know. That'd be weird, isn't it? It would be awkward at times. Well, you haven't got a little sister, so don't worry. That's not going to happen. No. Other than Danielle Harris. Um, so <laughs> just look, throw that away like that. Your face every time we bring it up. Every episode. Uh, right. Where were we? Yeah, so he's also engaged to her. Um, and, he, you know, he, wants, he says to her, let's get married. It's a very cute scene. Then they... So what we're doing is we're setting this really nice, comfortable, safe story where things are plodding along nicely. They go and pick up the rest of the logging crew who are waiting on the side of the road for them. There's, like you say, gather six of them all together. They pull up and they say, right, we've got this contract. You know, we're going to take these trees down over the next few weeks. Making our money. It's honest work. Hard work as well. You know, really, really big, hard labour. So they get to work. We get a nice montage now where they're logging away. Now, <laughs> logging away. <laughs> logging away. <laughs> logging away. To me, as as a 14, 15-year-old boy, logging meant doing your shit. <laughs> so when I say there's a nice logging montage now, the 14-year-old boy in me is thinking, <laughs> loads of people doing a poo. Yeah. It's, that's not what they're doing. They're cutting trees down. But we get to know a little bit about them all as they cut the trees down. We get to meet this other guy called Dallas. And he's a bit of a wild card, isn't he, in the crew? And we find out later he's got a criminal record. And he doesn't like Travis very much. And Travis doesn't like him very much. So there's a little bit of a friction between them, let's say. To the point that um, Dallas holds a chainsaw about an inch from... Travis's face. Yeah. And it's all a bit... It's all a bit much, but, uh, you know. So we cut back to the present now. What I like about this is that we keep cutting back to the present, but it's easy to keep track of, really. It's not... Yeah, it, you know, it's, it's quite it's quite nice because you have the their story they're having that it's got in the daytime, then the day finishes, and it's night time. Then it's it's, it, it's quite easy to follow compared to that film we watched earlier for the other one. That was a really hard one to try try and keep up. with. Yeah, it's definitely easy to follow because after the chainsaw moment, we cut back to present where they're telling the story in the bar, and the sheriff says, "So why? What was up with you with the chainsaw? Why were you doing that with him?" And he's like, "Ah, oh, I was just playing around," and he's like. Mm, I I heard that you and you two didn't get along, and he's like, "Nah, it's fine." And then we cut back to the story again, so we're going back in time again. Um, 
They finish their day's login. <laughs> and they're driving home at night. And so this is where it all kicks off. So they drive home at night and somebody says, what is that red light? And it's, I can it's, see it's an honest, over the... honest reaction for them to be like, fuck, that's a forest fire. We need to yep, get that, past this. And that, they, think, that's, they think it's a yeah. plane crash at one point, don't they? They say, yeah. God, like that is... Whatever that red light is, is a fire or a plane crash. Let's keep driving past it. But as they drive, they realize they're getting closer to it rather than going away from it. And one of them even says, I think it's moving. And they're like, well, it can't be moving. It's a, it's a, it's a fire. Yeah, and The fires don't move. So they're not really quite sure what it is, really. Um, they pull up. Well, the radio starts playing out because they've got the radio on and it starts standard sort of thing that the signal goes and it all gets a bit funny on the radio and they pull up and they see this like strange thing and, and uh travis walton the, the main star or the main character in this decides to get out of the truck and he says ah oh, he's a bit of a hippie isn't he he's like a real sort of positive guy who just wants to embrace everything and he's like so he gets out and he sort of says well, come on let's have a look what it is and everyone says what the hell travis get back in the truck what are you doing and this is where a white beam of light shines down on him and knocks him over it's really it looks brilliant doesn't it it's amazing because initially he's very upbeat about it but then he realizes actually this is quite a scary event i might get back in the truck but before he can turn around and get back in the truck the white light almost punches him really knocks him over yeah and he looks dead he looks absolutely dead on the ground and the other guys in the truck are all telling robert patrick to drive 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 and he says well my best mate's lying down on the ground out there. And they say, he's dead, he's dead, he's dead, just drive, just drive. So they, they just they just drive off and leave yeah. him. Uh, which was uh, like, what? How do you know he's dead? And that's what one of them says. That. He says, well, he did this jump, you know, he jumped really far. Like, it doesn't mean he's dead. <clears throat> but obviously, uh, this is weird as well, because they get away then, obviously, he... Uh, Robert Patrick has a bit of remorse and thinks, whoa, slows the van down, so I've got to go back for him. Then he gets everybody out. You wouldn't do that. You'd take a co-pilot back with you. You'd definitely take one other person with you. I can't believe he gets rid of everybody. Well, it's to make the audience, us, suspicious, because he says he kicked everyone out of the truck and went back on his own and couldn't find and yet, any trace of so the body. So when he, when, he, when he, whatever he says now, they're all saying, yeah, that's what happened. And they're like, well, no, that's not. That's what he saw, because he went by himself. You guys didn't go. So it, it does make it very suspicious. It's good storytelling for me. It's good storytelling. Um, so we cut back to the present day, and Robert Patrick says, you know, I searched. I couldn't find him. Um, I think they took him. Mm. But, of course, the sheriff does not believe in this. He doesn't. He, say, he even says, I don't believe in flying saucers. You know, he sort of cuts him down. We can see, though, that we've got one weak link in the group, and that weak link is Henry Thomas who is friends with the probing fingered ET not yeah. in this movie in another movie but he is close to tears in every scene he's in he's really good in this actually um plays a lot you know really emotional character who's just a very young distraught young kid really yeah and he is the weak link because later on he'll give some, <laughs> he'll sort of give a bit of information to the sheriff etc uh so yeah they took him the sheriff doesn't believe him no one is allowed to leave this bar until we get, you know, all of your names and your addresses because, you know, we need to we need to go and find this guy right now. And the sheriff says, well, hang on, hang on, hang on. It's completely pitch black. These forests are insane. Let's wait until 6 a.m. when the sun comes up. I can get 50 men and a couple of dozen dogs and we can go on a big old search, a manhunt. So this guy, so James Garner says, all right, we'll do that in the morning then. Yeah, and they both walk out the the tavern. Uh, the tavern? <laughs> What's a tavern? The tavern. Tavern. I was trying to say cabin, but a tavern. They walk out the tavern <laughs> and they go up to the car, and a uh, uh, old um, old James Garner looks in looks into the car and just pulls out a a sci fi comic magazine, just which they happen to be reading, which is a little bit suspicious as well, though, isn't it? And he says, and just hits the sheriff with it and says, "Well, you never know," or whatever he says. But he says, "What I but he's he's an old hand in this game, and he says, what I suspect is murder, plain and simple. And it's just the way, something about that delivery is great, because he's just like, 
I think this is the result, and I'm whatever happens, I will make that the result of this case. Yeah. It's murder, plain and simple. Yeah. So that's it. That's that's where he's going with this. He doesn't think it's aliens or anything else. He's not willing to believe any of that. Plain and simple murder. Robert Patrick gets home. His wife and his sister start asking him about what's happened. It's all over the news at this point. You know, Travis has gone missing. And he says, like, I don't know. All I can tell you is what I know, what I saw, which is a white light. I went back to find him and he's gone. I can't tell you any more than that. He's adamant. His story, you know, he really sticks to his story. And in the morning, we cut to the search, the manhunt. So we've got all these blokes, all these guys and dogs searching all through the forests. Travis's brother, who's called Dan, great name, by the way, uh, shows up and he is, he's pretty damn angry with uh, Robert Patrick. He says, what the hell did you do with my little brother? Well, it is, it uh, is they, fucking suspicious, though, isn't it? The whole thing's a bit it, like, it if is. you were there, you'd be like, well, obviously an alien hasn't taken him. You guys have done that. You would just think that. End of. And to the point that Dan, the, little, the big brother, has also looked into the, the background of that guy who was a bit silly with the chainsaw, Dallas, and he says, that guy had a criminal record for assault. So what the fuck was he doing on your crew? And I suspect he's probably done something to my brother quite badly. But it's still like they bring down so many people doing this search. It's still so... If you did that, but like how many man... It's just class of man hours, isn't it? human hours and humans do we need down here to do this and how much is that going to cost because we're going on the fact that you're saying oh yeah this uh, light came down uh, I don't know why it's like Keanu Reeves this, but this light came <laughs> down and whoa. um whoa. and um uh yeah took him away that's such a hard such a it's a hard believe isn't it it's a weird one the dogs do find something though and there's a split second where you think oh shit what have they found and they say we found something we found something so they start digging and they find a skeleton and then they realise it's just a dog skeleton they think some a hunter's hun- probably buried a some, dog yeah. some hunter buried his dog it's fine no, no so, worries about so that basically they find nothing no nothing at all and also if if they had killed him he wouldn't be a skeleton already so we you know I was comfortable with that there's nothing so you know, it's fine. It's the next day now, and obviously the town's slightly suspicious of them. Uh, you know, everywhere they go, they go to a diner, and they, everyone's just looking at them. Oh, yeah, probably will be. Yeah, he also finds out. Robert Patrick also finds out that their logging crew has lost the contract, so that he's got a lot of money issues. Him and his wife are arguing because they're about to lose their mortgage. He can't keep the contract together. Now he's lost the, the contract for logging. I quite so like, how's he going to make any money? I quite like the concept of logging. We don't really we have tree surgeons and stuff over here. Don't we have so much? Because I suppose you probably do a little bit. But I quite like logging. It looks alright. I'd quite like to get into that, Gavin. I can picture me and you out in the forest, logging away. pushing over. Yep, just We're logging off. Plaid, plaid shirts, logging off of each other. Log in, off in and log on. Brilliant. Branching out, you know, really getting to the root of the matter. Taking a leaf out of a book. Barking up the wrong tree. Mm. Everything's going to be oak A. <laughs> I can't compete. I can't believe you don't have children. <laughs> literally don't have anything sorry about that wouldn't you believe it I've got more jokes going on and I, on and on for I days would <laughs> I've got wood come on so so yeah they lost the contract arguing with the wife they um, asked to take so, a lie detector test though aren't they well just before this Robert Patrick decides to check into a motel on his own um, because him and his wife decide to have a little bit of a break because it's all getting a bit, bit much and the report this is where the reporters descend upon the town and everywhere they go any of this crew they get absolutely swamped because they become starting to become quite famous um they, but not just reporters gap we also get ufologists and these guys are a bit weird and creepy aren't they they really want to sort of uh, we believe in you but by the way we believe your story we understand what you're where you're coming from and they they really 
Is this the guys? That, weird. Who are these guys? Is it, is it, no. Oh no. I'm thinking later on something. Sorry, when their friend. They show up. No, they do show up later again. They oh, do. that's so they who they are. So I, for some Mac. reason, missed this bit because later on when they turned up, I was like, "Who the fuck are these guys?" And I thought it was the yes, press. These guys show up at this point and they sort of say, oh, "By the way, we believe we're ufologists. We just we study." objects in the sky and nighttime thing blah 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 so robert patrick at this point thinks you guys are talking nonsense but uh yeah so dallas has gone missing at this point well, dallas it's, is it's the more chainsaw. suspicious though isn't it really and the sheriff says i need you to take a lie detector test <laughs> because henry thomas et's buddy told me something he said the reason that dallas had a cut on his knuckles is because he got into a bit of a scrape with travis in the woods you guys didn't tell us that so i want the truth and i want you all to come in for a lie detector test and they say absolutely fucking not against human rights we're not doing a human uh, lie detector test bollocks to that so they don't want to do that none of them are interested in doing that initially more suspicious more suspicious um robert patrick goes to find dallas and he says he lives out like on a on the edge of town, like a trailer park. And where have you been? They say. And he says, "Well, I've just been here playing cards." And they say, "You know, we've been asked to take a lie detector test, but this guy's like dead against the man, and you know, anything that remotely society driven. He doesn't want anything to do with it." And they say, "Well, look, if you don't do it, we then it goes against us all. The only way this works is if we all take the lie detector test and we all pass because we're telling the truth." So you're really with these guys. You know, there's always going to be a dodgy guy or a weak link in a group, but you're really with these guys. He says, I don't really want to do it. And Robert Roger says, if you don't do it, we can't prove our innocence. Mm. So that we kind of end the scene there, really. There's which a bit is, of a scuffle. Yeah, which is like, yeah, just do this. Because, like, you got to come into the realisation that what you're saying is fucking loopy, basically. The TV, at this point, the news is absolutely just non-stop the logging crew that had a friend beamed up up by an alien you know people from all over the world start arriving we get some japanese people and i like the fact the inspector says to uh rob patrick like i i i believe you mike i am um, do i just don't know why you're covering up for something you know he says yeah he says i believe you don't know what happened to yeah, travis but yeah. i don't know why you'd cover up for dallas or yeah, somebody like that yeah, yeah. so he thinks basically and a couple of the cops think it was dallas that did this alan dallas that did this they think the other guys i don't know what they can't understand why they would be covering up obviously it's an incredibly weird mental story if if a bunch of people went into the woods and said oh someone's missing um an alien spaceship sucks them up into it well yeah it, you know, you're going to think, well, one of you probably chops him up, but especially as you've got chainsaws and axes. It's basically like a big suspicion omelette filled with little eggs of suspicion mixed together to make one big I one. I love a suspicion omelette. I've got to be honest. That's because you've got a secret ingredient and you don't know what it is. We get a fantastic scene now where the town meeting happens and Robert Patrick walks into the middle of the time meeting and he gives this fantastic speech. This is probably one he of Robert Patrick's... Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. probably one of his best acting moments, really, in his career. He sort of stands up and says, John, over there, and Fred, over there, you've known me for this many years. You, you know, you know me, guys. Like, But he also says, believe what you want to believe, but why would I make this up? Why would I invent a story about this? I can only tell you what I could saw, which is a white light, and then he was gone. I can't tell you any more than that. I'll tell you what, though, we're going to take this fucking lie detector test, he but says. It wasn't a white light, and then he gone, though. That's the thing. They saw a white light, he got thrown, then they drove away. He went back, he wasn't there. It's more likely that he could have just walked off with hyperthermia and just fucking got lost and died or something. Do you know what I mean? He says, I can't change what's happened or what I said. But I'm going to do the test. We are going to do the test. So this is the turning point. They're going to prove, try and prove that they're telling the truth. Now. But but that is right though, isn't it? They they have not actually seen this happen. They've just gone back. Robert Patrick's gone back by himself, and he's gone. That's it. But they well, did, let's not they forget, did see they an did alien. See shit. They all saw they an alien think... and the white light and what it did to him. And then they went, "What the fuck?" 
so I guess it's a right for them to assume that that's taken think, him in the way that their mind must have been going and the adrenaline rush and all that stuff. But I think most people would drive the fuck off if they saw. Oh what yeah, they saw. absolutely. But it's, it's you know they never actually saw it. So even if they do a lie detector test, they didn't actually see it. If they say, "Did you see that happen?" They <clears> can't say yes because they didn't. Now, normally, I'm not a fan of a montage, but this lie detector test montage is great because you get you, you have get the to guys do something very, like this, though. Yeah, he's interviewing all of them individually. You know, he's asking them like, "What colour is my shirt? Is it white or is it blue?" Yeah, and yeah, he's, yeah. he's getting them to say different things like, "Did you kill Travis Walton?" And since, and he's marking down little things on the things it's been printed out on the lie detector. It's a great little montage, um, and they all come out and they say. Right, so we got the results in, but we're not allowed to tell you the results yet because one of the results is unusual. Obviously, we find out that was Dallas, the wild card. He says, so I can't, we, can't, we have to wait till we get every result properly confirmed and so then come we back give you the tomorrow. results. Yeah, come back tomorrow, we'll do it again. And they're like, fuck, oh, fuck you, uh, we're not doing it. We've done what you wanted us to do, we're not doing it. Right. And he says, if you don't believe us, then you don't believe us. He said, if you want to arrest me for murder, arrest me for murder, but... We didn't do this. We've told you the truth. We can only tell you what we know and what we saw. And you kind of like you're you're with these guys, man. Like Robert yeah. Patrick, especially. Like, I think this is honestly one of his best roles. He's so good in this. Um, he's you know he played the Terminator in Terminator Two, and he's been in a few bits and bobs here and there. He's obviously in the X Files, but this is one of his best roles. He's just so good in this. You know, a guy that's just seen something weird he can't explain, and the way he acts. All the way through, like I'm trying to explain that I, I've seen something, whether you believe it or not, I don't care. I've still seen this weird thing. I think he's brilliant in this. Big Robert Patrick fan over here, Gav. I could tell. <laughs> Robert Patrick gets suddenly. This is where it twists. Now this is so good. Is this the midpoint turn? Middle of the night. Ring, ring. Hello, who's that on the phone? Robert Patrick speaking. Who's on the phone? Hi, it's Travis Walton, your friend who got beamed up by aliens. Can you come and help me? What the fuck? <clears throat> yeah, naked, this is naked Travis. Can't so they go off, away. they drive yeah. off, and they and spend ages drive, driving around trying to find him. It's though, they? because at this point, <clears throat> you know, like that safety blanket I like when sometimes the police turn up, etc., etc. There you go. It's like, yay, the town doesn't think they're horrible people anymore. Everybody's happy. Yeah, so they grab him, they pick him up from pet, from a gas station, and he is naked, he's really upset, he's got um, terrible wounds around his eyes and mouth, um, he's, he can barely speak, actually, for the first few scenes when they find him, he can't even string a sentence together, he's extremely thirsty to the point he spends about 10 minutes drinking out of a tap. And he um, screams when he's touched. Oh, yeah, he doesn't like it, and then he spots some fingerprints on a window that remind him of some fingerprints from later on in a flashback where he's pushing out of a cocoon as well. So the only bit of this story that I don't really get is that Robert Patrick, rather than call the sheriff or anybody, he called the UFO guys that gave him their card and earlier. I and don't understand they this up. at all. I thought it was the press. I was like, who are these people? Why have you rang them? And then they get annoyed with him and say, get out of there. You got what you need. Get it. And this, it made no sense. So that's that's what I'm saying. Like, if I was Robert Patrick, I would have called the cops or the sheriff. But instead, they called these UFO guys who come along and question quite aggressively. Question Travis, like, what do you remember? What what do they look like? What do they, where do they take you? How long have you been gone? Do you know that you've been missing for five days? How long have you been back on the, this planet? And he's just it's confusing him and upsetting him. And I don't really know why they why they do that, but they do. No, I don't know. Maybe that was part of the the real story. I don't, I don't really don't know. Um, but yeah, so what do they look like and all that sort of stuff goes in. He goes into shock and this is where we get the first sort of flashbacks that Travis has now of being aboard some kind of ship. We don't see any creatures, but we see some movement and maybe even a few little gadgets that look like they're going to be probing. Probe, have a drink. Probe. Have a drink. Um, <laughs> maybe, yeah. So that's the first kind of bit that we get. Uh, they take some. Uh, they take some photos of him as well. These UFO guys. I don't know what they're up to, but they're horrible I bastards. I don't understand. No. He goes into a bit of a catatonic state into hospital, and there's a weird moment now where Robert Patrick comes in and sort of says, "And you kind of, uh, you get this as well." He says, 
man, I'm so sorry that we, you know, we left you. I, I wish I'd have stayed with you. And then this is where Travis says, hang on a minute, you left me. And he says, well, yeah, I mean, you got knocked over by this big white light. You look like you were dead. So we just drove off and everyone was screaming at me. And Travis looks at him and says, so everything that happened to me is because you left me. And you get this, like, yeah. he, really res- he really resents that Rob Patrick just drove off and left him. Yeah. And Robert Patrick's so guilty that he has to go at him back and says, well, fuck you. You know, what would you have done? This is, it was a crazy thing. And he gets up and, st- and then the nurse comes in and says, oh, you shouldn't be near this lane. He's like, oh, I'm fucking leaving. And he walks out and there's like a, and they don't really patch it up really until the end scene after this, do they? It's, no, 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 no. It's pretty fucking intense. And and again, well, Robert Patrick moves away from his kids and everything, doesn't he? Eventually. And again, it's 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 great acting from Robert Patrick. You know, it's not something you say very often, but it's fucking awesome. I love that. Um, well, to to, Tra- to to be fair, Terminator Two is pretty one dimensional, isn't it? Really. Well, yeah. I suppose. He's all right in that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, from Dust Till Dawn Two. Oh, fuck off. You're really pushing it now, Gav. <laughs> You're absolutely fucking pushing it now. Jesus Christ. <clears throat> from, when somebody says, oh, from Dust Till Dawn 2, in any sentence, <laughs> fuck off. Bruce Campbell's in that movie. That's the only good thing about that. Uh, I, yeah, it's one of the only videotapes I've, I've got had. the box set. I'm looking at the box set up there right now on my shelf. I haven't seen the second one for and years. And to be honest with you, I could quite easily set fire to two and three and warm myself on them. Um, okay. One, one, is a, one is a great movie. Two and three, dog shit. Yeah. Don't Can wanna, I continue? Don't want to you know? cover them then sometime. No, fuck off. Okay. <laughs> don't fuck off. I love you. Uh, so Travis gets released from hospital the next day and the reporters swarm him. Uh, everyone in town is staring at him. He's famous. Kids want his autograph on newspapers. And the sheriff, the uh, James Garner character, the investigator, comes up to him and gives him a bit of a... So, guess you're uh, going to make a bit of money out of this, aren't you? Yeah, you're uh, quite popular gonna, now. Yeah. You get a book deal and interviews. Probably going to make quite a lot of money out of this. So he Biggest can see where his point's omelet. going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the omelette is being cooked. He's throwing cheese and onion into the omelette now as well. Cheese, Just to... oozy, oozy cheese. Oh, I love an omelette, Gav. I love it. I'm a good omelette maker, man. I can make some good omelettes. I'll make you an omelette sometime. Please, your scrambled eggs are always fantastic. Mm, what I love is you always go to what hot sauce do you want? And you've always got about six different hot sauces in the fridge. Yeah, so I get it's... the choice of... It's variation not, it's not I have, the next time you're down I'll have to make sure I've stack the shelves get that hot sauce in for my scrambled eggs my dude <laughs> people are getting an insight into our friendship and our relationship now it's me what? staying over and, and you just cooking me scrambled eggs with hot sauce that's pretty <laughs> much what happens that I mean, that is, is... <laughs> that's it <laughs> nothing else <laughs> I always make the coffee as well. Yeah. I always wake you up and go, I've made a coffee. Get up, you lazy kid. It's 8 o'clock. <laughs> you go, oh, it's my morning to lie in. Please. <laughs> I'm like, no, getting up now. Oh, Making be... me scramble next, bitch. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> so, yeah, so Travis gets uh, questioned by the sheriff. You know, and he claims he's going to get money for a story. He gets home and there's a big old welcome home party for him. All of his friends and family are there. But he keeps having these weird alien flashbacks to the point during the party, his wife, uh, well, his fiance walks in the room and he's hiding under the kitchen table. Mm-hmm. Scared like a little child. And he's Freaking having out. a really intense PTSD flashback. Some honey starts dripping off the table and drips onto his face. And this is where we cut to this insane, probably the moment in the movie, really, isn't this it, is, this scene? This is, this is the bit where the movie just fucking goes there, and it looks like an outtake from an a- Aliens or something. It's just like, it goes what into the this, fuck? This, moment. this is the biggest this... flashback I've ever had. Sarah fell asleep through this flashback, woke back up, and she said, is this still the same flashback? I said, yes, it's going on for this that long. Up. This is probably one of the, like, the movie's been quite grounded, you know, we've not, we've seen flashbacks, but this movie just suddenly goes into the point that he's in the ship, and all this shit we're about to describe happens, it's just... And floating, you know, and, it's and a massive also, set as well, isn't it? The effects, yeah, well, the set's massive. The the aliens look good. Of, aliens look great. We talked about how their eyes were real in his like account of the real story, and they the eyes are what sells it for me in this as well. Mm. So let, let's go through this. So he wakes up. 
And he kind of looks around him and he realizes he's got slime on him. And the honey does that. So the honey that's stripped on his head makes him remember that. And he looks around and he realizes he's in a weird cocoon bubble. So he pushes out of it and he manages to break it. And he sort of climbs out of it. And then he re- instantly realizes there's no gravity. And he floats into a dead man's chest and puts his hands well, right he... through the chest. It was, hot. Yeah. it was so disturbing. He finds other bodies that have been eviscerated and, and ex- probably experimented on, and he he doesn't know what's going on. He, luckily, there's a cord that he's hanging on to, and it's almost like an umbilical cord. Did you get that? Yeah, sort of? yeah. Yeah, so he's like as a child on an umbilical cord, and he, he kind of climbs around with inside this zero-gravity ship. And again, it's like there's definitely some womb sort of... Um, something to be said here about that, you know, a child in the womb floating around with a holding on to a cord. But anyway, he finds... At the bottom of this chasm, this what seems to be where he can float down to, the gravity's pulling him down. And as he heads down there, he sees, after finding dead bodies, etc., like you said, Gabby, he finds what looks like big, giant children in the womb. They're like in the fetal position. And as he lands, he realizes they're actually aliens. Then he gets closer to them, and then he realizes, he actually says out loud, spacesuits. Because he realizes these aren't flesh, these are suits. Yeah. And he turn, turns one of them around and he looks in the back and sees, okay, so they put it on by getting in and the back someone, of it. And one grabs from behind, doesn't he? Fucking hell, fuck off. Why does it do that? Don't Why? Know. Don't know. But he gets Grabs kicked him. though, doesn't he? Well, he boots it in the head and his helmet comes off. And, this and he is looks really see. pissed off. The alien just generally looks like, you It can't. just looks at him like, <laughs> you, you earthling bastard. Yeah. Um, and this is where the aliens come in the room now and grab him and they drag him off by his foot. And these aliens, let's talk about the, uh, because it's all practical effects, obviously. They look great. There's no CGI. Um, it's very subtle, you know, less is more. You only see little cuts here and there of them, but they look fantastic. The expressions, it's all about the eyes. They don't talk, obviously. You know, if they suddenly start talking, you'd think, probably think it sounded shit or looked shit but they drag him off they put him on a table and this this is where he undergoes some horrendous shit gav isn't mm, it mm. He, they he put gets a, factory packed well they put a sheet over him yeah and the sheet sort of sucks over him so he can't it breathe it sucks all the air out and all they do is they, they cut his mouth hole open and, and one eye hole open and they just put in this uh, um, they device put to of, open well, they put the, of, the mouth open well, they put loads of the black gunk in his mouth first, like lube. Yeah, it, yeah, it's well, it's, the, it's for before the procedures. It's like when before cutting someone open, it's just you know. And then the clamp goes in his mouth with the tube coming out of here. Yeah, and then just start enforcing like what is it, liquid? And, the, and this big tube, hose comes down, it clips into it and pumps something into him. But at the same time, while that's happening, he gets the clockwork orange treatment in one of his eyes because he gets some weird spike in his eye to rip his eye open it's fucking and they gnarly, pour some white, dude. white mucus semen looking liquid into it's his really eye it's really quite disturbing to be honest with it's you. fucking horrible the, and he's image. trying to scream he can't because he's got the thing in his throat and he's going and, he's air, he, air. and he can't do it he can't move because he's like factory packed like airtight it's horrible I understand why a lot of people have cinema trauma from this movie if you saw this when you were like 12 or something it's, man it's so f- far further than the movie is do you know what i mean is in, in, well, is in like shocking you know yeah a bunch of guys in the woods with a story that's been questioned over and over lie detectors very real gritty things and all of a sudden it's like well actually here's what's fucking happened to travis yeah and it's it's really terrifying actually it's and Pretty gnarly. No wonder the guys... You understand why they find him naked, shaking, screaming, and not wanting to be able to speak or be touched at the at gas station. Absolutely. If this happened to him, it's, just, it's kind of the equivalent... Oh, I, don't, I dare... I hate to say it, um, but it's kind of like he's been gang-raped or raped or something. Does that make sense? I I don't want to he, downplay yeah, anything he, like yeah, that. He, he, he's, he's been, been completely violated and, you know against his will all these things have happened and then yeah. he's just left naked and shivering yeah. in a rainy gas station and that's where they find him later and it's just horrible really yeah um it's funny because this movie is so sort of slow now but then then that happens especially early when he screams when he's been touched at you I'm not saying cut this movie down a bit more i think i'm still going with the make it a two-part tv show tv movie you know there's something about it because that is so just a shocking out of nowhere like what the fuck 
Well, it was kind of like for me, like that. The other movie that I watched with you, uh, well, not with you, but I watched the extraterrestrial where they, uh, the anal probe comes out of yeah, nowhere yeah, yeah. and really fucking. That's like that movie is quite slow burn and a little bit like cheesy, and then all of a sudden I'm like, holy shit! This just went from naught to sixty. Yeah, it's a bit like that, I guess. Um, the weird thing is that this scene is kind of the last major scene of the movie, really, because we now cut to slightly in the future, probably five or six years in the future, and Travis has is married Dana. And he's got two children. Well, he's got one child and another on the way. And, you know, he seems really, like, adjusted and happy. And we find out he actually actually hasn't spoken to Robert Patrick in about five or six years. Uh, and he just decides one day he's going to get in the car and drive out to this cabin. And he drives out to Robert Patrick's cabin. And Robert's there. And he says, what do you want? I haven't spoken to you in years. And he says, come with me. And he drives him out to the spot where the he was, so to say, abducted. And they have a nice little chat, and he kind of says, "Although you left me, I for well, he doesn't he doesn't say it, but he basically says I forgive you, and we need to put all this behind us because it's been five or six years." And he says, "I'm pregnant again, you know, I'm having another son." And he, Bob Patrick says, "Again?" And he says, "Oh, you haven't even met my first son, and his first son is called Mikey, named after Michael, his character in this." So. Yeah that touches robert patrick and you know he's like oh that's so sweet and he says you know we need to put all this behind us we need to make it up i forgive you have you slept and robert patrick says no i can't sleep properly since you know the thing happened and he says look robert patrick or mike everybody misses you you need to come back to town you know you've been living out here in the woods you left your wife you know come back let's be buddies again and he says uh all right we'll go back but do you can i ask you a question do you think they'll ever come back and travis says nope that's no. it they're done with me they didn't like me no didn't like him basically there was something weird about him they didn't like you know that you know, they experimented on him and it didn't work he says well i think it's because he probably kicked him back. in the head and that it's a little bit like this <laughs> one's a bit of a fucker head. isn't it they just keep me in the head get rid of him normally we just probe them or kill their cows but this one really kicks me you in can, the head you can tell that if one's violent just, just not bother there's enough of them and then they have a really genuine nice laugh and they sort of drive off together and uh that's that and that's it, really. It's just, a, it's a really nice ending. And I, I just fucking dig this movie, man. I just, I dig the movie. And I hope we've done it justice because it is a slow burn. And it's one of those ones where you've just got to let it unfold before yeah, you. Yeah, I don't, I think you've got to go at this film not expecting it to be some fast paced thing. It just isn't. It's, it is a slow one. But if you're into Aliens now, it is quite good effects and it's quite well acted and it's recounting a story which supposedly happened it's a very grounded um story so if you're thinking about alien movies you're looking at the thing alien uh you know these kind of movies predator where aliens come to the earth and these crazy shit happens this is a much more grounded story about a bunch of guys not anything spectacular happened a white light hit one of their buddies they left him they went back he wasn't there whole town thought they'd murdered him you know you can see this happening for real and then eventually the guy shows back up as a curveball shows back up naked five days later and claims to you know been abducted and we get a little bit more to it and it's just very subtly nicely acted mood it's underplayed almost understated yeah and it's like it is this would have made a really good X Files episode, but it's been extended into a very long well not very long, it's not even that long, it's only an hour and thirty eight minutes. It's just a great movie all round for me. It's definitely one of my favourite alien abduction movies. Um you know. there is a, in ninety seven Far and from the Sky uh documentary and two thousand and fifteen Travis, the true story of Travis Walton uh was released, which is an hour and a half. Well, I read out his... And that's got him in it. I read out the account of what actually happened, or what they said actually happened. But the other theory is that the guys, after they finished their day of logging, they all took a shitload of LSD. Um, And this is the big theory that everyone suspects. And they all went... They all went nuts. And six of them came back. 
Travis couldn't find his way back. Find his way back naked five days later, and claims to have been abducted by aliens. And as we, as we all know, you know, some of us may or may not have done it, listeners. But LSD and these kind of hallucinogens can really fuck with your mind, and even make you have think you've got memories that you haven't got. So maybe, maybe that is one of the theories, Cav. That uh, yeah, yeah, you know. yeah. But it's an interesting story, and it's a very well documented case. The Travis Walton experience or the Travis Walton experiment. And, you know, there's so much to be looked into. Like you said, that Gav, there's books, documentaries, this movie. It's a great movie. Um, yeah, if I, if I see a documentary or any of the documentaries, I might take a look. It'd be nice to see from his own voice, his own, you know, the person who's Travis himself talking. But, yeah, um, I mean, he, he went on to have um, four or five children um, with Mike's sister, uh, you know, and he's. Happy they married, living out in the middle of nowhere. Just doesn't really, really want to interact with people so much. He's got PTSD from what he says happened to him. You know, his eyes were fucked for, for weeks and weeks and weeks. He but had really it, black, bad it, bleeding eyes. It, it, and it could be no UFOs and just acid. It could be acid and LSD. It could be. Crazy. But, um, there we go. So, yeah, right. really good movie. I think out of the two, so, so you... 100% agree with you. This one is the one, really. You know, Fourth Kind is a hard watch in that it doesn't, it's not very linear. This one is a great story that just unfolds before your eyes. And yes, I do give this a thumbs up. I do Big give it a thumbs up, up also. Um, Roy, World of the Strange. Yes, well, the strange. Billy, 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 Bill, Bill. Hi, welcome back to World of the Strange. World of the Strange. World of the Strange. Michael, it's strange. Strange, Michael. Strange vows. Strange. Gav, we're going we're to talk about <laughs> strange shit. <laughs> we both said our names at the same time. Gav, Dan, Dan, Gav. Do you know what? I think me and you should star in an 80s comedy. Like, back in the day, we would I think we'd have done all right. Like Bill and Ted. Yeah, but a bit more raunchy. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Bill and Ted, bit more real cheap. <laughs> fucking hell. What, like nerds? Yeah. Oh, fucking hell. Well, before we get into some alien shit, because <clears throat> obviously, you know, this episode is about alien abductions, I experienced last week a, a true life supernatural weird phenomenon I wanted to share with you. Nice. Was it in your house again? It's in my dad's house. Okay. So I've talked about my mum, my mum and dad's house being haunted and having strange things happen in it. This has gone um, on this before, is, hasn't it? It has. We have, we've got something called the Grey Lady in that in that house that she makes herself known occasionally. Now, unfortunately, as as my list as our listeners will know, my, I lost my mum last year, and the Grey Lady kind of has gone away a little bit, which is very strange. No evidence of her around at all since then. I don't know what that correlation is, but I just thought I'd mention that. But the other night, I stayed over my dad's for a couple of nights in a row. Mum's gone now, so I was on my own, me and dad, watching a bunch of movies. Uh, and we were chatting about mum and having a really good time and eating pizza. And it was lovely. And I felt so happy. Did and... you watch that thing, Blu-ray? Yes, we did. Did you, did you, did you enjoy it? Absolutely. We had a, an amazing time with that. We even watched a, Ro- a Dwayne the Rock Johnson movie together. We what just what? had a proper boys night. We watched Rampage and then we watched oh, yeah. Skyscraper as well. It's Skyscraper nice, you did it. It's so good. Dad was <laughs> Dad loved Skyscraper so much. Sweet, he was like, sweet, sweet. he was like, this is so intense because it actually was quite intense at points. Yeah, it's alright. But it was good, yeah, it was fun. And we watched Rampage, which is a giant wolf, a giant gorilla, and a giant crocodile smashing up New York. Strange movie. We're... I haven't got, I haven't watched that one yet. But he has it's another so... one just come on where he takes revenge on something, which I thought was quite good. Sorry, yeah, you're doing a lovely story. Can, can, no, can it's run? fine, it's fine. So I was having a great time with Dad, um, reminiscing, having a boys' night, talking about my mum. And all went quiet, watched this scene, and I swear to God, and you know I don't bullshit, Gav, I tell you these things... 
So I had longer hair then because I got my first haircut last week in lockdown. Uh, since lockdown, as I told you off air, you know, I had a very big hair and it was ridiculous. So I got my hair cut. But before, but before then, I had quite long hair at the back. And I just felt a hand. And that's this is how it is. I'll tell you how I felt it. I felt a hand stroke the back of my head in a very soothing way. Sat on the sofa with Dad next to me. And I, I just froze. I got goosebumps. And I felt this hand stroke the back of my head. And it was just mental. I told that the only person I told is Alice. I didn't tell Dad because I didn't want to upset him or make yeah, him sad yeah, or anything. Yeah, it wasn't your dad, um, was it? No, no, it wasn't. No, it was it was Mum. I honestly, Gav, it was Mum. Uh, it sounds mental when I'm saying it out loud, but I I know for a fact I felt well. Maybe it wasn't Mum, but I definitely felt a soothing, calming person stroke the back of my head. And I I told Alice, and she said, "Oh my God, were you scared?" And I said. I was a little bit scared, but not. But it wasn't a negative vibe. It was like a nice positive vibe. I can't explain it. So I just wanted to share that with you and with our listeners. Yeah, that no, it's lovely. No, it's good, man. Weird yeah, thing. No, brilliant. It's so I'm glad. strange. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I'm quite open to these things, particularly since losing my mum. You know, I'm even more open to things these days. And uh, yeah, and that was a really strange. And maybe it was just. Maybe I just wanted to feel it. I don't know, but I definitely, <laughs> for me, I felt. A oh. hand straight the back of my head. Oh, I reckon it. I reckon. Yeah, I reckon it's your mum. What else? Oh, you, what else you uh, open for nowadays? Then I'm open for it. Open all hours. <laughs> 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 but that was it. Let's get into some alien stuff. Do you want to get into some alien? Yeah, of course. Okay. So uh, I want to. You know, we've talked about aliens a lot. We both believe in aliens. You know, there's no point in us talking about aliens and UFOs. You've you quite concisely covered a lot of alien shit in the, the intro to this episode. What I want to talk to you about, Gav, is some celebrity alien stories. Are you ready for this? I can't wait. She fucking can. Do you know quite a lot of celebrities have seen aliens? Let's get into that shit. You ready for it? Go, hit me. As always, I've got a little list. First up... John Travolta. Let me just, let me just grab a little sip of wine. Is John Travolta on there? Dan Aykroyd, definitely. First up, Elvis Presley. Oh, sweet. What did he do? Oh, 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 Elvis, oh, Presley. Oh, no. yep. Elvis Presley has claimed he has connections I've got to con- extraterrestrials. I've got connections. Oh, thank you very much. Oh, I've got some connections to it. I've got extraterrestrials. He said, he said when he was born, his family and his family doctor remember an unexplainable light beaming over the family home that he was born in. And Elvis Presley recalled that when he was eight years old, he was telepathically visited by aliens that showed him a future vision of men wearing a white suit singing to a crowd. And he knew that that man would one day be him. Really? He also said, I've seen several UFOs in my adulthood, particularly strange moving lights throughout the desert whilst I was in Nevada. And Las Vegas. They're not just floating cheeseburgers, are they? Now, let's be honest. Elvis Presley did a lot of drink and drugs and probably made a lot of this shit up. But I like to think Elvis Presley was connected to the aliens, Gav. I like to go that one too. Next on the list, you're not going to even be remotely surprised by this celebrity, David Bowie. No, no. Or Bowie. Ziggy Stardust. David Bowie, he did the classic song Life on Mars, and he even starred in a film called The Man Who Fell to Earth. And uh, he's long reflected uh, his fascination on with ter- extraterrestrials. Uh, and the occult, he's, he's, he, he was one of those dudes. Uh, he claims to have seen many, many UFOs throughout his life. He said, as a child, as a child, oh, I can't do it. As, as a, a child, child. He's all- as a child, he saw many UFOs that he simply... He said, I just got used to seeing them everywhere I went. Um, you know, and when I got to, be, to become an adult, I saw objects floating and hovering over fields, and I thought, this is... Are you ready for this? This is his explanation. He said, I saw something hovering over a field, and I thought, this is just a projection of my own mind making sense of quantum topological doorways into dimensions between beyond our own... 
to mention. David Bowie, man. David Bowie. <laughs> what a dude, man. I saw something over a field. What did you see, David? Ah, oh, it's probably just a projection of my own mind trying to make sense of quantum topological doorways into dimensions beyond our own. It's just that dude, man. I that's can't... a quote. That is a fucking quote that he actually said. That's, that's incredible. Um, I can't even say the title of the movie we covered this evening correctly. And that dude is a ling- linguistic masterman. Masterman? See? Mastermind. <laughs> I don't even drink alcohol anymore. Next on the list, the very famous guy called Robbie Williams. Okay. I saw him once. He was... For anyone that doesn't know, he was in Take That. British he was singer. drinking in my town once, and it was a Friday night, and I, I was down there, and I, I wasn't allowed in with my friends into a pub because it is a scream pub. So it's basically, it's the first scream pub um, where uh, only people from the local college could go into, and they wouldn't let us in, the fuckers. And we walked down the road. Then he was walking along with one of those All Saints girls. Oh, yeah, he was going to have one of them for a while. Yeah, yeah, and another girl. And they got let into the pub. So we went back to the bouncer and said, how come he's let in then? We're not, he's not a student. And they still wouldn't let us in. We got well, it was Robbie Williams. Take that. Of course yeah, they're going to let him in. I know, but we were, we were kids drunk and wanted to be... You tell annoying. me what boy band you're in, Gav, and I'll let you in my club. Take, how about that? Take, take this. We're the cool okay. ones. Come on, come on in then. Uh, so Robbie Williams took a break from his singing career and his public life in 2006 to study aliens. Did you know that? No. So he supposedly experienced three UFO encounters. So he started attending UFO seminars and conferences. He connected with many fellow UFO enthusiasts. And he he said even once a UFO visited him when he wrote the theme alien song, Arizona, and said, I just finished writing this song called Arizona, which is about alien abduction, when there was this glow and this ship above me. It was magic. Now, I must have probably told, should have probably told you before reading this out. Robbie Williams once got so into cocaine and champagne that he coined something called a champagne cannonball, which is where he ditched a shitload of cocaine into a glass of champagne and necked it. Ended up in rehab because he was doing it so much. So probably should have told you he did that before he read that bit out. That yeah. may have had something to do with him seeing that. Yeah. But there we go. Moving on. Muhammad Ali. Okay. He had a lifelong interest in UFOs and aliens. He claims to have seen many UFOs and said he's been watched by UFOs on 16 different occasions. He, he did get punched in the head, though, didn't he? A lot. Hmm. And abs- I mean, his job was to literally get brain problems from being smashed in the head. But he said he saw uh, 16 different UFOs, and one time he even saw a mothership. Nice. Well, I hope George Clinton was on it. He said, if you look up at the sky in the early morning... Sometimes you can see them playing tag or touch if really? you're in the UK between the stars. And the greatest, and the greatest alive. Um, moving on, Olivia Newton John. We all know her from Greece. Mm. At the age of 15, Olivia Newton John says, I saw a flying silver object traveling at amazing speeds over the Cambridge countryside. Since then, she was a firm believer in the existence of extraterrestrial life and quoted, saying, In England, most people think that UFOs are possible. 20 years ago, how many people would have thought that? Doesn't really make any sense to me. <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> but good on her. I'm glad she said words. Here's another person, Gav. This is the last one, I'm afraid, but I'm going to read it out anyway. Uh, is it OJ Simpson? It's William Shatner. Wow. I see aliens everywhere. (laughs) He said he saw a UFO in the Mojave Desert in 1969, but then said that was a lie. But then he said, I still believe in their existence. He said, there is no doubt in life that life is out there. (laughs) The mathematics of a spaceship, it just leads you to 
the absolute conclusion. <laughs> In my mind, there is no doubt. You sound like you're going into uh, uh, Christopher Walken. Christopher Walken, no <laughs> doubt said, in my mind. He said in my mind. He said in my mind, there's no doubt that the universe is teeming with life in all forms, and I know it's out there. Cool. I believe him. There we go. So, for word of the strange, all I could do was find some UFO, because um, some celebrity, because celebrities obviously they speak the truth, as we know. They don't lie. You know, no. there's no bullshit with them. I wanted to give you some insight into UFOs from a celebrity point of view and perspective. How do you feel about that? Good. I enjoyed it, man. Is that our world of strange for the day? What I would like to say before we wrap it up, that, that, episode, that little segment is, yes, of course, Nicolas Cage. But what other celebrities do you think have been or are aliens or have been touched by aliens? I'm thinking definitely Nicolas Cage. I'm thinking Corey Feldman has definitely been probed by some oh shit let me just rephrase that that is terrible yeah i'm so sorry oh god i feel really bad <laughs> for that what i'm saying is oh god i'm just you feel like human. he's been touched by aliens yeah i feel in like a he's non, in, non, with in a in a above the trouser line way there are certain celebrities that you just think john travolta that's what there's I was a, saying, yeah. yeah he him as well there's, you look at him and you think well there's definitely something about you that says to me, if an alien was going to come to Earth, you'd be like, yeah, it's all good. I chat to them all the time. Yeah, Nicholas yeah, yeah. Cage, as well as well. Frank them. Zappa. Oh, you can imagine Frank Zappa probably oh, was. Oh, of course. This old dirty bastard from the Wu-Tang Clan, he, was, he even said once... He's probably on and, a spaceship now. Now, he died of crack. Yeah. Just to remind you. But he did say once, I'm just waiting for the mothership to come and take me back to my home planet. Hmm. What if there was something in that guy? What do you reckon, Michael Jackson? They wouldn't have had him. Why not? He would have probed them. Oh, look. Stop it. Right, let's get out of here before you ruin the, the world. Of the strange. Strange. Bill! <laughs> Please help us. That's all the time we've got for this week on World of the Strange. Next week, though... Give me Ira. Hairless pets. Weird. Hello. Here we. Well, well, that was it. That was episode ninety-four. That's what I say. Welcome back. Yes. Welcome back. That is it. We've done aliens. Aliens have done us. They they probed us good and proper. And uh, we got, we after that. after this, though, probing won't be coming up anymore. So have we quick drinks for your probing? Because next episode probably won't be probing, will it? Well, Gav, we we've actually had a quick uh, question from one of our patrons, one of our listeners, one of our friends, Kate. Okay, hello, Kate. Just just relating, hello, Kate. Just relating to our our, our episode, actually. <clears throat> so she's got a couple of questions here, and I'm going to put you on the spot here now. And I, you know, we've both got to come up with some answers for these. Mm -hmm. So the the first question around aliens is, well, some of these are statements actually reading through it. She says, first of all, personally. I think that there must be aliens somewhere. It just can't be us. It just stands to reason. Well, I think we've answered that. We agree, Kate. Yep, we agree on that. There is, we are not the only fuckers in this universe. 100% agree with you on that one. Her next uh, little statement is, <laughs> I love this one. This ties in with what you said earlier. With the general responses you two have on the World of the Strange segments, obviously Dan is Mulder and Gav is Scully. Yeah. You are a sexy redhead, Gav. Thank you. Uh, apart from this episode, I am Mulder. We're both Mulders. Well, I, I would love to be David Duchovny. And if you were... Julian Anderson. Um, Julian Anderson, then I'd be all over you like a rash. We stop this? You've been drinking. <laughs> You've now, now visioning me as Julian Anderson. Glad we're not doing this in person on round air. If you're all over me. Here's a good question, though, from Kate. Come what here, is your... Scully. Uh, here's a kiss. <laughs> like, dang, I'm going I'm to I'm gonna probe you. Um, what is... Kate says, what is your favourite non-horror alien film? So, she said, not E.T., because that it can't be that easy. It's got to be something different. Hers is Paul, because she loves that cast and it cracks her up. Maybe even Mars Attacks as... I consider that to be more of a sci-fi comedy, although some people say it's a horror. 
What's your favourite ad- non-horror alien movie, Gav? Have you got one? I can't think. Of. What do you think? You go first. I've got a couple. Independence Day is all right. It's not a horror. Uh, oh, that's a good shout. I've got three, actually. Okay. The first one I would say is, and it, some people do class it as horror, and we have actually covered it, and that's Predator. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. So, okay, when we get on that wave, then, yeah, Predator, fucking dope. Yeah, although it's still touching on the realms of horror. If you're pushing away from horror, I've got two. Yeah. One of them is, and you're going to be really surprised about this, Men in Black, the original Men in Black movie. It's an horror movie. It's a good movie, man. And it's definitely, you know, aliens and shit. And it's definitely just a comedy, fun movie. Yeah. Um, but my, I think my favourite of all time, and again, I, I'll go back to my mum on this one. It's my mum's, one of my mum's favourite films of all time. John Carpenter's Starman. Okay. Something about that movie really speaks to me. It's it's not your typical alien movie. No. Um, it's just a beautifully told story. Jeff Bridges is incredible in it. So, Kate, I think that's my answer. Gav, do you not have anything then you would say is your favourite non-horror alien movie? No. <clears throat> I'm no. Not, no, I'm not sure, really. Um, Independence Day is quite good. I don't know. I need a list in front of me. I like, too I like that. I think that's good. Yeah. Um, I think I think underrated um, in, in, uh, Independence Day and Men in Black I, could I push it, push out the boat and say like an India Jones movie are you talking about the Kingdom of the Crystal oh god oh. no I think I was trying to go for some others now because they're more culty aren't they they're not aliens that's the only one oh no Kingdom of the no no Jesus wept no if you were to answer Kate with the Kingdom of the Lost Skull <laughs> this podcast End on episode 94. How about Closer Cows of the Third Kind? Do you know what? I'll take that. Although it is a little bit scary, it's not horror, it's really. Not and I will take that. Horror. And that's a fucking great movie. Yeah. I'll take that, Gav. And actually, I think that's probably the best one out of all the ones you've men- we've mentioned. Take it well to done. the bank. She also says, what would you ask aliens if they ever came to our planet? I, need, I, can't no, wait. I can't wait to hear this. No, because I think I'd say something a bit more deeper than what you're thinking I'm going to say. Hello. <laughs> Go on, what are you going to say? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 it's, it's a hard, what would you say? Let me have a little thing. What I, would you say? I, I think I would say, <clears throat> if I can ask them two questions, I would say, first of all, have you, did you build this earth? Did you build us? You know, did you create this? Okay, I'll move you on that. Or, or, or do you know more about, you know, the creation of the universe? I want to know a bit more about history or, or The creation time. of the universe and, and uh, a, a map map of it or something, I don't know. Or, yeah. or the reason. Just insight into it's it. Just the or... reason why, you know, why. But yeah. the other question I'd also say to them is, and it might actually only be able to be answered if they know the answers to that first question, but the other question would be... Um, have we fucked it up too much? Have we got? Are we able to repair what we've done? No, it's well fucked. Okay, that's really positive, guys. So, I'd like to hear that. It, it is. Sorry, the <laughs> planet's pretty fucked. Her last question, which I'm a big fan of this one, and I can't wait to hear your answer, is: What's your favourite alien representation in any movie? I've got two for this one. Mm, cause you, like xenomorphs are super cool, but that's kind of like Geiger thing. It's don't forget you got your Star Wars. If you want to go, you got anything you want, just, really. Just, what do you think? I'm going. <laughs> I'm giving you I've to got say. Two. I've got I'm giving you to go I've first, and I say, yeah, I yeah. agree with you. <laughs> my favourite, my coolest alien. I've got two. So the coolest alien that shows up for me um, who's a badass and a cool dude is Predator mm-hmm. like I just love him I love the fact that he he kind of plays on that they're slightly better than mankind thing that we've talked about you know they almost maybe created us in the Alien vs Predators movies and I love that he's just such a badass with these weapons and these almost dreadlocks and he's just a dude but my favourite alien representation in any movie I'm so sorry to be cliched here. It's the thing that that fucking creature mm. in the thing. It's just this, this 
um, disease almost. This this life life force that preys and sucks on us and uses us. It's like a germ, and I think that's an incredible. And that goes out to John Carpenter, you know, and and the original movie as well. But I I think Xenomorph. I'm going. That's my favourite. I think. That's a good one though because it just looks the, just, the, so just cool. the normal xenomorph, not the mother or nothing, just the smooth, round head xenomorph. Those ones are just so fucking creepy. And the mouth within the mouth. Yeah, it's just that whole thing. It's just like that is and just plus, gnarly. Throw in uh, face huggers and shit into that as well. Face huggers is, is pretty... like your little pets. Yeah, like like dogs. Oh, oh. Xenomorphs like little dog. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. I agree, man. It's gnarly. It's gnarly. It's gnarly. Well, there we go, Kate. We've answered your questions there. Thank you so much. Okay. And. Uh, we believe. I think Gav is I would, the, the I, I'd have to ask something deep. I think. I think I'd be like, "Why do I have the uh, ability to ask you why? 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 Do you know what I mean? I'd have to start getting in some deep shit." But I don't, it's too hard to say in one question. It's way too hard. Actually, I think the question I would ask is, "Are you going to blow us all up? Are you going to be all right with us?" Yeah. Or do you want to hook up? You can say that. Do you want to? Yeah. You broping? Bro- come come on well there we go that was episode 94 fantastic episode alien abduction we wanted to do this for a while is exciting should we talk about what's coming up next yes because i know there's some werewolf fun coming up at some point oh shit son episode 95 we are getting hairy we're getting larry and we're getting scary i can't wait (laughs) for this uh we are doing dog soldiers oh my god that's gonna be so much fucking fun and we're doing that paired up with American Werewolf in Paris, which me and you both fucking love, and we don't give a shit. Yeah. Amer- it's werewolf babies. That's I can't, I can't wait to do those two movies, actually. Um, I Is it wrong of me to be more excited about doing American Werewolf in Paris and Dog Soldiers? <laughs> <laughs> I mean... Is that bad? No, it's fine, if that's what you want. In fact, Gab, i got to be honest, our next three episodes are pretty big heavyweights, so we've got that one coming up. Yeah. Episode 96, we are revisiting... John Carpenter, part three of our John Carpenter special. Yeah. You've picked Escape from New York. I picked They Live, and we are going to be covering both of those movies and having a blast doing that as well. Yeah. So that's going to be a hell of a lot of fun. Soundtracks, acting, some of those scenes are just brilliant. And yeah, a lot lot to talk about in those two movies. And episode 97, I'm so excited for the next one as well because we are having another another revisit. We're revisiting... um, 80s vampires and episode 97 is going to be Fright Night 2 yes underrated as fuck and Grace Jones being all sexy and scary in Um, Vamp so episode 97 is going to be a sexy fantastic episode that's going to be interesting conversation Fright Night 2 I'm a big fan of Fright Night 2 I, Dude, I, I can't wait. It's, a, it's so, so some... funny what I said to RJ recently when he did Taken on Box Size Cinema, and I said to him, oh, dude, like, uh, uh, the werewolf from Friday Night 2 is one of Liam Neeson's pals that helps him find get the intel for where his daughter's going to be. And it's so funny, because if you look him up, he's been in fucking tons of shit. It's so weird. You're like, what? The vampire? From that and Monster Squad, not Vampire Werewolf. <laughs> Talking of Liam Neeson and horror movies, yeah. <clears throat> just before we get into our admin and sort of say goodbye to everybody, I was watching a the Deadpool, the Harry Callahan. Yeah, w- was it good? Now the opening scene, I thought I'd clicked the wrong film because the opening scene is Jim Carrey in a horror movie. And he's miming along to Welcome to the Jungle, we got fun and games. And he's miming along while a girl, an exorcist girl, her head is spinning around, vomiting, possessed. And then they say, cut, 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 everyone. And it's Liam Neeson directing. So Liam Neeson is a British director of a horror movie that Jim Carrey is in. And I thought, Guns of, and Guns N' Roses are in the movie later on at the funeral scene and I thought what? I definitely pressed play on the wrong film here no it's the Deadpool with um, I, I Red- found my VHS I was, I've been clearing out all my vinyl and taking it to my folks to put in their loft I hope their loft can take it just to store it because I'm, I'm going to be doing a move at some point and I found behind all my vinyl the fucking Dirty Harry box set on VHS so I didn't know there were five of them yeah I thought there was three Sudden of them. Sudden Impact, Deadpool, Dirty Harry, Magnum Force. 
Something I couldn't else. tell you. I honestly couldn't tell you. Something else. Okay. Yeah. But, uh, uh, and how was yeah, so It was fun. It was really good fun. It was like 1989. It was Lethal Weapon style action. He had a Chinese friend, a cop, who stereotypically did loads of kung fu on people. Like I said, Jim Carrey was in it as a heroin addict that got killed in the first sort of 20 minutes. Yeah. And Liam Neeson was in it. What a fucking weird film. And I loved it for that. Was Liam so, Neeson in it for long? Yeah, he was the director. He was all the way through it. He was You're joking. Of, he was like, well, I don't understand why they killed off Johnny Squares. And Johnny Squares was played by Jim Carrey. He was this like rock star who decided to star in a horror movie to get a bit of extra money. It's just a weird film, Gab, but it's so fun. So if you've got your VHS, I'll, yeah, I'll check it out. grab that grab that video player I gave you I, I, I was watching some video recently um, my DVD player stopped working for whatever reason and sometimes I just lose connection up here and so um, I actually was watching a few videotapes on your video player that you gave me Actually, I actually tried to get the DVD player to work but it don't work because it's a combi but you did send me that oh yeah to the DVD player is fucked. But yeah, the, I tried the, to get it to work. But then my, then my DVD player started working again, so that's okay. Anyway, not enough about my technical things going wrong and stuff. No one gives a shit about that. What what could do the admin do? Do the admin. I will do. But yes, just to remind everybody, we've got werewolves, then we've got John Carpenter, oh, that's and then, good, we, isn't it? then we've got 80 vampires coming out. So our next couple of episodes are going to be very fun and very exciting. So, guys, as always, Pride member, the podcast on today was a Pride member of Legion networks you can find us and legion networks on legionnetworks.com as well as all of the other incredible shows and podcasts that are on there you can find us the podcast on under the hill most active on facebook just jump on facebook type in the podcast on haunted hill you'll find our page we have a lot of people chatting and talking nonsense on there a lot of fun great big time great big fun as rj great big says, fun a ton of fun Ton of fun. Uh, you can also visit the Legion podcast page. And honestly, there's too many shows for me to name. But off the back of that, you'll probably find a show for you, whether you're into heavy metal, uh, mental health, um, you know, whatever it is, man. Jesus Christ, there's fucking everything on there. Horror, pop. Um, it's just insane. Uh, other popcorn, uh, popcorn, other popcorn, <laughs> other podcast you're thinking, of, you're thinking of cock porn aren't you cock porn, other cock sorry. porn. Cock porn. other podcast platforms you can find us on as usual you can find us on Spotify YouTube uh, Podknife the Apple Casts Podcast Addict app, dot app and the Podbean app we're also on Twitter at Haunted Podcast Instagram under the podcast on Haunted Hill and Insta and let's not forget Deadbolt Films we've talked about them earlier with our comic coming out soon we're very proud of Tom for that. So you can find us on deadbolfilms.com. We're also on YouTube. If you want to see a rando ting, whatever the hell it's called. Gab, what is it called? Rando Norton. Norton. Random astronauting. Go on our YouTube channel. <laughs> and you can find out what Gab's been up to there. Uh, just type in Deadbolt Films to YouTube. And also Deadbolt Films is on Instagram, just under Deadbolt Films. And we're on Instagram at Deadbolt Films. And um, finally, but most not last at all and you know we've got to talk about our patrons we really want to thank our patrons they're growing every time we say this it's, it's amazing oh, thank, we now thank you so much seven patrons um yeah seven patrons so thank you guys if you want to become a patron um ask gav or i and we'll send you the link alternatively it does pop up occasionally on our but, facebook well, page but, but, even no, if you... but don't do that hey, well, if someone isn't connecting us they won't want to do it where is is there not a patron name you can just go to patron and yeah you just go search. on patron and search the podcast on haunted hill right okay it's on there that's simple enough. yeah and even if you just want to donate a pound a month anything you want to do helps us out it really does guys and we are about to start rewarding our patrons i promise you guys we have been coming up with a plan because we're getting enough money together now to be able to properly reward you guys as well as keep the show going forward and fund the show and the equipment so we really appreciate that so to our patrons thank you ever so much R. Jamie creedy let me out kate pollock rachel elizabeth sarah k kevin s fife and our newest patron jamie jenkins thank you jamie uh so thank you to everybody and Gav yeah thank you so, so much <clears throat> but yeah thank you so much for the patrons I massively appreciate that um, insane we are humbled it is it's, it's just me and Dan's every time I little... mention to Gav we get another 
on Patreon were like, what? This is insane. Why it's do, lovely. Why, why do people want to listen to us? But yes, yeah, so it's nice. Thank you. Um, and if you do want to listen to us and you want to hear me rambling on a bit more with my other half, um, we, oh, yeah. um, uh, I've got another little show, The High Strangeness Podcast. Um, go there, episode five. Sarah talks about dying. Um, and uh, that's quite a fucking crazy story. And literally, I kind of interview her and it's a bit just strange. That. Yeah, it is that. Um, and talks about near death experiences. Anyway, check that out if you like weirder stuff. Hope you guys are all doing well during lockdown. Uh, it's easing off a bit now. In the UK, we still have to wear masks as we enter into shops, but um, things are easing off a bit. We really hope that everybody's doing well. Gav, it is a gigantic thumbs up from an alien probe up your bum. I was wondering how many more times you're going to get the P-R-O-B-E word in. I'm not doing it anymore. <laughs> so it's a, it's a good night from an alien probe. It is. It's a good night from Robert Patrick. It's a, good night from, it's a good night from I'm the actress Milia Yakovic. And oh, I will man. Be... <laughs> and it's a good night from um, the kid from E.T. That, you know. Thomas got, definitely got a finger by E.T. in the cupboard in his bedroom right it's a good night from you definitely <laughs> it's a good night from you thank you right thanks guys peace for... love and also guys watch the skies yeah watch the skies and yes listen to Dan watch the skies um, right take it easy guys and we'll see you see you later bye a fire in a scarf <laughs> I thought I was going to make that. I thought I was going to do it. Far in the scar, I said. What's the far in the scar? <laughs> right. Oh, oh. Start again. <clears throat> far in the scar. <laughs> right, let's try again. Thank you for listening to the podcast on Haunted Hill. We will be back again real soon.